Yes, Cinder, a remix of Dark Souls 3 by Rotaka. <laughs> Folks, you know what that song means. Sure do. <laughs> it's, it's well, fine. Yeah. Fine, yes. I'll be alone. Do it's it. It's time for insert <laughs> credits, round 58, <laughs> Animals Crossing. This is your July 2018 episode of insert credits round. round. There Whatever. we go. I, I mean, to, we have so many different names. For I had to look it's at fine. the thing to remind myself. So don't feel bad. It's <laughs> Journey. Round 58. It's fight. fine. Yeah, it's fine. So yeah, <laughs> it's time for us. I'm Tormod. I'm Mr. Bond. And I'm Saxon. <laughs> and yeah, this is uh, this is our post SGDQ. Not that well, any of us went for more than a day. Yeah. Uh, stream regarding the last month's worth of news and things we played and yeah, game and designs and that. Designs. Yeah, exactly. The and, ad hoc designs. And also we... post your guys' move. Yeah. Well, that's true. Yeah, we got a whole lot to talk about. <laughs> we had to uh, move pretty much the entire time GDQ was going on. Yeah, we were there for a day. <laughs> it was the it was the best. Yeah, yeah, that's the word. But yeah, ended up uh, getting rid of a lot of stream equipment and getting a lot of new stuff. And I'm like, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Ooh, that eBay deal, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was so we'll, good. we'll get into that. Yeah, we'll we'll, yeah, we'll consider that around the world. I, I, so. I do want to cover that. Yeah. So yeah, got a whole oh, bunch of new stream setup boy. coming. Oh, yeah, we could do. And we got some good stuff coming October, too, apparently, True. right? True. Oh, yeah. Yeah, boy. Yeah. It's going to be good. I suppose we can have our public reveal. During this show, we yeah. we kind of, did we ever? Like, I mean, we announce I, it on like I, I kind of like I said things, but like it wasn't announced. I guess I guess we didn't have like a big post or hullabaloo about it or whatever. So yeah, well, why don't we start with around the world then? Sure, yes, yeah, so around. Well, housekeeping first. Though. Oh yeah, fair. Housekeeping. Fair. Come on, man. I mean, do we have much <laughs> house to keep right now? No, but I okay. already <laughs> forgot to bring up the calendar, so that's oh. about how good that's well, going. Well, that's fair. I think we're actually good through September at least. Yes, we are certainly. Uh, August is the seventeenth. Seven p.m. CT for round fifty-nine. Yes. September is the fourteenth. Same time, of course. Yeah. Uh, October is the twelfth. Oh, we actually did schedule that. Wow, that I don't really? know. I think we stopped at October. We didn't do November. Yeah, we didn't. We didn't actually do October either because it's kind of on the calendar. Are you sure? Uh, I don't see it. It's on my calendar. Oh well, you got to share it. Oh, then. it's on the it's on the quest for semi glory calendar. <laughs> oh, that's, okay. That's I was like why. that. That's not a thing I can <laughs> see. Okay, let me edit that right quick. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> it's on say, my that's calendar. Be you should get it. Hell of a oh, round there, there because right. that's going to be yeah. the the post marathon round. It is. Yeah. It's going to be uh, <laughs> post wedding uh, uh, round. Yeah. Post also true. Everything. Yeah. Po- post apocalypse round. Ra- oh wait. Uh, well. well uh, <laughs> Anyways, we're going to be It's already tired, well beyond sure. 2012, so, you know. Uh, well. <laughs> Which 2012? <laughs> Whatever. Oh, dear. Moving on. It is yeah. It is something. All right, now it's time for Around the World. Yeah. A. All right, well, Whew. so I guess we'll talk about that thing that's not as far in the future as I thought. Wow, it's less than three months. Yeah. Fuck. All right, so uh saxon and i are getting married in october on the weekend of october 5th it just so happens that we're also having a housewarming and it also just so happens that we're having a marathon that weekend oh yes so uh, screw having a honeymoon I don't, I don't think there's much so happens about that i I feel like that was very well planned yeah you're not wrong. yeah so <laughs> our first major marathon not that the other ones weren't big for us but you mm-hmm. know they were they were they were Working up to this, um, our first major marathon is going to be called Super Stigma Slam 2018. Not to be confused with the Triple S from uh, Southern Speedrun Summit, which is also during October. <laughs> or the, the, the TwitchCon games done quick, what is it called? Hotfix? Oh, GDQ so- Express. Express, thank you. Hotfix was the other thing. Yeah. Which mm. will also be in October. <laughs> yeah, so there's a whole hell of a lot going on in October. And yeah. actually, about that, if things go as planned, we'll actually be doing our normal, normal, our what second unquote. annual uh, Extra Life Marathon in November, soon to move to a different month in 2019. But mm. this one's staying the same. Oh, it is? Did we yes. decide that? Okay. Yeah, that was all at right. the company meeting. We were I, like, hey, let's do it this year. Okay. All right. Yeah, I, so I know we talked about it a bunch. I was never real clear if we had Oh, a, that's fine. We can like, totally yes, do it. Yeah. I don't we, think we we're sure going to do a, like another 24-hour straight oh, thing. Oh, heck but no. We can split <laughs> no it up into yeah, like two days was, over uh, a weekend. It'll be a lot more chill. We could, we could do that. Like I think when we did... Um, end of 2017 like the 16 ish hour uh-huh. one that's probably like the upper limit of what yeah, i do yeah that's at, the at most once. i would do in a day yeah 
I mean, if we wanted to do a couple days, whatever, it's fine. But for Super Stigma <clears throat> Slam, we've had some interest in having longer runs happen overnight, and people offered to do tech. And I was like, if All y'all right. really want to do that, That's we cool. can do like a 48 plus hour marathon. Yeah. We'll see if the connection stays alive. I hope it will. Um, but yeah, no, Super Stigma Slam is going to happen possibly the late evening of October 5th, if not that, the morning of October 6th, and it will go into the 7th. And that will be our big venture. That's mm-hmm. going to be the first major event that happens at the new house, which I suppose I can talk about too. So I'm really see. excited. One of the requirements for moving, actually, well, two of them, the first being we need to have a non-cable internet connection that is also non-DSL. Hmm. Um, it just so happens that the condo that we just left is now getting fiber service. I'm a little salty over that. Oh, yeah, me however, too. <laughs> however, hopefully that neighborhood buys into it because they weren't like 100% signed with TDS yet. But this place... In theory, we can get 1,000 down and 400 up. Our neighbors say that they only ever got like 750 down, but I still think that's worth it that just is to get the 400 yeah. up. Still. So all things considered, it's also less than half the price of what we were paying for our business cable connection before, so whatever. But, yeah. Uh, the other thing was we wanted a finished basement, and more mm-hmm. specifically, we wanted a space to host marathons because our previous marathons were held in... Um, either the master bedroom at our condo, which was a very cozy fit, mm-hmm. or the living room, which was the, I guess, the unofficial, hey, benefit uh-huh. us marathon that <laughs> happened. The other cozy fit. <laughs> yeah, because we had our reduced stream set up in our living room at that point mm-hmm. because we were in the process of showing the condo and all that. So anyway, this is going to be the first major event that's actually in the marathon space, and we're going to have better tech this time. We're going to have people flying in. Not just for the marathon, for the wedding also. Mm-hmm. But we're going to have people there. It's going to be more than just the Motley crew that's been doing it in the past, EI included, and Eon, hopefully. She said she'll be there. Uh, obviously, she's providing some food, too, for <laughs> the reception. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> nom, 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 nom. Anyway, yeah. but yeah, we're going to have uh, more than just the usual faces. So it's going to be really cool. I'm hoping to get a website and a submission form up soon, TM. That'd be cool if we can get it by the end of the month. Yeah. Hey, man. Everybody's really busy. <laughs> yeah, I If know, it comes I know. down to the wire, there's always Google Forms, right? Oh, yeah, well, that's Google what we were planning on doing. Yeah. Version yeah. one here, definitely. Yeah, yeah. no, it's, it's going to be that. Um, really, it's, it, as far as the website is concerned, it's really more a matter of content. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. That's so fair. the more people we have contributing to that, the quicker it'll be able to get up. Yeah, yeah. So let's mm-hmm. get everybody started on that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So I still have some people who are kind of on the fence as to whether they're going to um, commit to going that weekend. However, I did get a couple definites and people who have already purchased their flights. Oh, nice. So mm-hmm. I'm so. hoping that I can get some people to sign on to longer runs to do that kind of overnight thing because they're like, hey, you should do this thing. I'm like, guess what you get to do now that you suggested it? So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's going to be things like that. But, um, I, I have a couple people that I would really like to attend, and they're still kind of not 100% sure they can yet, but we're going to see. Well, if they can't, they can't. Whatever. Oh, I know, it, but he'd be able to fill so much content. It'd be great. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, we've always kind of got a few back pocket runs that we can oh, do absolutely. to fill time just in case. <laughs> yeah, I could always sure. dig out some Commodore 64 games. That's true. We can always uh, improve our second place time in four-player co-op. Oh, yeah. we sure can. I mean, now that it's rebalanced, and there, there's no way that we could do worse. So... It would be a very big achievement <laughs> if we did to worse. To do worse. Yes. yes. It, it would be quite yeah. the show to do worse. So, I mean, that would be fun. Uh, we could also sing another <laughs> song from that game, perhaps. I don't yeah. know if there is another one, but... I mean, that's really the only one with lyrics, so... Oh, that's fair. Uh, I mean, we could, we could you like... Could just, you could sing that again because we can actually, like mix it correctly this time yeah i mean yeah i'd, I'd be fine it, i'm fine throwing that up as another donation yeah. incentive to hey have, why not like, a redux of it so. and speaking of donation incentives Surprise. this is kind of we kind of did it by the seat of our pants last time so if anybody has recommendations for donation incentives we are <clears throat> more than willing to hear you out so incentives for runs incentives for challenges within the runs mm-hmm. uh goofy shit 
like me barking in Mario Kart or <laughs> you know yeah. whatever. Yeah, it, it's fine. Like any any and okay. all suggestions was... will be open to. So what I can say for now, because we don't have an official website, what you can do if you do have suggestions is to go to zero hour dash productions dot net slash marathon. That is my blog post that said, hey, guess what? We have this concept. We're doing this thing. Yeah, so it doesn't have any of the updated info like the name or the dates or anything like that. However, uh, it is a good place for y'all to leave comments or I have contact information there. So you can get in contact with me. I am the producer of said marathon. So um, any ideas you have, definitely feel free to throw them my way. So those were the big, like, in three months things, but we have a lot of things that happen earlier that's true mm -hmm. before we move on though you had mentioned something about this kind of being a big tech thing for us and it that's true it will be because this will be our most prepared marathon i'm calling oh, yeah. it right now yeah because our extra life 2017 marathon the tech was prepared in two weeks yes the end of 2017 one was prepared in three weeks yeah and now this one will be two four weeks two, <laughs> i've already started working on yeah. it we've Damn already it. started working on it oh, so it's true. like yeah. two and a half months so we've got a lot more Oomph yeah, that's true. the tech this time around, which is nice, which is going to be really nice. We have a collaboration with another marathon. I don't believe I'm allowed to talk about that right now. Beyond I don't think that, so. No. so yeah. we will have some input on tech decisions. So looking forward to that. Yeah. A lot to be done yet, but Indeed. we're all very, very excited. Did you talk about who we're benefiting? Did I miss that? Uh, Did I space yet. out? Okay. Um, but we're going to be benefiting. Take this. It is a charity that has resources for mental health and mental health awareness, and it is very good, and we'll be using Tiltify as our back-end processor for donations again, so rest assured that when you make donations, you'll receive a PayPal receipt saying you can use this for your charity yep. reasons, for yeah, your taxes right and whatnot, so we don't see any of that money. Doesn't go to us at all. In fact, good. we probably lose money because we'll also be donating. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, okay, I, lose honestly, is the wrong verb. Yeah, but. it's way better that, that there's a separate service handling that, though, because handling money is just such yeah. a chore. Oh, especially know? because Payment you would... Is, well, that and, like, we would possibly also need to have a charity subsidiary of our own Correct. to handle yeah. all of that stuff, and I don't want to. So and, and, and all that yep. paperwork and crap is just not our thing. That's not what we're here for. Yeah, And lawyers. We're, well, he we're here to yeah. do the fun things, to raise the monies, and not to give it to the, the, the administrators and yeah. <laughs> right. all that. So rest assured that your donations will be super official and you'll be able to write them off because we're using Tiltify in the back end. So that's going to be pretty neat. Um, it also enables us to uh, call into their API to do better versions of donation scraping mm -hmm. than what we had av or available to us with Extra Life. Speaking of Extra Life, though, did you know... That Tina wrote her own thing to actually interface with their donation tracker such that it's almost the same as Tiltify's. Oh. I, I knew that she had done something. I wasn't oh, aware yeah. it of is the extent very of it. fully fleshed out nice. specifically for Extra Life because that's all of her stream proceeds, including like bits and sub whatever. Uh -huh. That all goes directly to them. And she does her own marathons for Extra Life and right, she wants right, right. to like see the tracker and stuff. So Right on. Yeah, her GitHub Ooh. has a bunch of cool stuff on there that she's like, use it. And if you have suggestions, obviously, you know, submit a pull request, yep. et cetera. We'll so. we will certainly do that uh if for this next Extra Life one. We Yeah, we'll check that out. If I, we had a Python script scraping in the background that we had to constantly restart, it was yeah. the best. <laughs> I, I had skimmed her repo like very briefly, but at that point it was two weeks to marathon. I'm like no, nope. you know this is probably fun and cool and good, but <laughs> yep, 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 yep. So getting down to the wire, yep. got to <laughs> yep. do uh, the bad things with the codings and all that. Yeah, so, we made it work. We, it did We're, work. It was is, surprisingly good. That is our career. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we pulled same. off minor miracles for both of those events. I That's think, true. Yeah. We great. we had a really good time. Um, we should really do another end of year thing again, though. Between. <laughs> No, it's just so a wanna, one day thing. Okay, yeah, but between Super Stigma be... Slam and Extra Life, and now you want to do another. End yeah, of we're thing? we're really that that's really piling we, up the last. We quarter. are squeezing people for their money at this point. <laughs> well, it doesn't. Well, okay, yes, obviously yes. we're going to be benefiting a charity, but at the same time, these things are fun. They are and very it, fun. Like it was really cool at the end of 2017 because it was like, hey, I can ring in the new year in my own way. And that was kind of neat. Mm -hmm. So instead of feeling obligated to go visit a bunch of people and drink a bunch of crap because, yeah. you know, I'm going to anyway. But still, 
like we were able to do it for a purpose and it was actually really successful too so uh-huh. that was really nice uh-huh. Ama- hmm. all right so now now that you said so that's got me thinking a little bit <laughs> instead of you know actively soliti- uh, soliciting donations from other people maybe we make it kind of a, a challenge on ourselves like i mean we can yeah, x sure. number of things we we pay ourselves x number of dollars for this certain event or yeah. whatever yeah that's fair and then if people want to kick in too if, if they <laughs> yeah. want to join the challenge as yeah. well i think that would fair. be really neat we will structure it in such a way that it is more of that kind of thing. Um, it's going to be a little... Whatever. It's going to be less structured. It was less structured last time. Like, we had a schedule, and that was about as much structure as we had. We didn't <laughs> mm-hmm. even stick to it. So, well, it was just a good time. We, we stuck to kind of the general feel of it. I, yeah, we did. Until, we, like, we the had last three days. Days. <laughs> And then yeah. after a while, it was like, it what was if like, we just played Goat uh, Simulator for three hours? Yeah. And what if Mario Party Eight didn't crash? <laughs> yeah, that too. So <laughs> that's all right. We 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 did we did the cool ad hoc things. It's true. We do to need to get through. Mario Party up and and running at at one of these. Though. There's a new one coming out for Switch. Uh oh. Fortunately, Ooh. yes, it's going to be easier oh. to actually play. Yes, is, is that the one with the whole online plays and you know sort of? Uh-oh. I think they allow you to do the mini games right. only online, which is yeah. kind of disappointing because the board game oh. is the best part. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, fair. I mean, I'm all about the board game, but yeah. Anyway, I, I, I like them both. If we're it's doing a good it mix. local co-op, it doesn't matter. There's HDMI out. It's gonna be yeah. a hell of a lot easier to actually get it playing on a console. I, I don't think I would ever play Mario Party online. Like that's no, a, that's a that's, game you have to have a room for. Like that's a friendship ender, but online friendship enders, we got tons of those. I yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mario Party's not really that much of a friendship ender. Is uh, it? Uh, <laughs> y'all are speaking from experience. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there was this thing, this magical thing called college, and people living in close quarters, mm-hmm. and people playing games in close quarters, and getting upset. Oh, mm-hmm. and college like, friends are ephemeral, dude. Well, not really, as no. you're looking at too. But um, <laughs> yeah. ripping the controllers out of the controller ports, etc. Yeah, we've we've been there, you know, for videos or not. But yeah, game yeah. dynamics change when you are within punching distance of each other. <laughs> yeah, oh, absolutely! Fun. Wow, this is like a yeah. This is hinting at so much of SNC Brawlers right now. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, 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 never mind. I'm yeah, I've never seen it before. No, never. No. And you never will. No, uh, <laughs> delete from the internet. <laughs> Moving on. Okay. So now that we've covered all of our kind of upcoming marathon things, Super Stick of the Slam 2018, October 5th, 6th, yes. 7th. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yes, I remembered. Good job. Uh, around the world that is not our world. Can I can I talk about marathons because we're already on yes, the topic? Yes, okay. absolutely, please. So SGDQ 2018 happened in Bloomington. Woo, way to go, everybody. At a new hotel. Interestingly enough, it was at the same hotel as, um, what the hell is it called? Uh, Midwest Speed Fest. There we go. It was I a keep surprisingly... calling it Midwest Meme Fest, but yeah. <laughs> it was a surprisingly good hotel. Like, uh, oh, yeah. A much better experience. I, okay. Granted, we were only there <laughs> for a night. Outside of but... one major problem. They advertised gluten-free things yeah. Ooh, as being this. gluten-free, and they weren't. Oh, shit. Yeah, and oh, apparently the hotel is just kind of like, get lost, losers. But SGQ is sending out these mass emails being like, if you're affected by any of this, let us know immediately, mm. et cetera. So yeah. mm. they ended up playing PR cleanup. But beyond that, everybody that I heard said that the experience at this hotel was vastly superior to that of last year. Where it was downtown, you had to play elevator hell to get up to your room yeah. and back down, et cetera. Although I kind of like that. I mean, there was well. some nice food options and stuff where it was the year prior, but I mean, I like downtown Minneapolis in general. It didn't help. Yeah. I mean, it is a fun place. Yeah, but, it is but nice. I mean, like that's downtown Minneapolis for you. So yeah, yeah. <sighs> but yeah, um, it was in Bloomington at a different hotel this time, and there were many more options. Parking was free. It was yeah. not crowded, et cetera. So. That happened from the 24th of June to the 1st of July. They raised a new SGDQ record of $2,153,387.56, which is not the most they've raised in a charity, but it is the most they've raised at an SGDQ. However, obviously there are other GDQ events. As we mentioned earlier tonight, GDQ Express is going along and kind of tagging along with TwitchCon. That's happening sometime in October. It's going to be a shorter thing. Um, run submissions opened this week without any 
warning. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh so, no. Well, hello. Yeah. So people <laughs> y'all want to like, see ah! y'all want to see how fast the site can go down. <laughs> well, yeah. So gamesdonquick.com if you want to submit. Oh, um, boy. That's going to be out in California. I don't quite remember where, but gamesdonquick.com will tell you. Yeah, they they really could have used something out out west. Like we've we we have oh, GDQ were... in the Midwest and GDQ on the East Coast, but well, they had it briefly in Utah. So Colorado, Colorado, that sounds right. They did. Yeah, supposedly it was, was briefly in Colorado, like way back when. Oh, okay. But in yeah. any case, um, the other one that's more major, the one that will actually be attending, at least two of us, um, AGDQ twenty nineteen has moved hotels. Their other contract expired. It will now be in Rockville, Maryland, and it will be the week of uh, January 6th through the 13th in 2019. Looking forward to that. Um, Is it still going to be as much of a challenge to find booze? (laughs) Well, we're going to be in Maryland now (laughs) instead of Virginia. I mean, wait, was it hard to find booze in in Virginia? We were in freaking Virginia. So you had to go to state run booze stores. Oh, really? Yeah, it oh, was it was really you, a Virginia. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> Virginia's weird about that. Maryland might be different. I don't know. But we're gonna be in Rockville this time. So oh. shrug. I thought you were talking about Utah at first. I'm like, Mormons, yeah. Yeah. They, they don't they don't dig their booze. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. So okay. right. no, Fair AGDQ, much. Rockville, Maryland, uh sixth through the thirteenth of January in twenty nineteen. It's gonna be lit. There's going to be so mm. many people there that have already committed to going. I am very looking forward to seeing everybody that I saw last year, plus some new faces. Yep. Um, obviously, as we mentioned before, we were moving. We lost the SGDQ date uh, lottery this last time. Yeah. Uh, where we thought it was going to end up being the week of July 4th and have our closing the week before, and we'd be able to go. Yeah, no, that didn't work out that way. but then they way, changed so. it to the week before. Yeah, so <laughs> we will be going to AGDQ unless something catastrophic happens. So look for that. Yeah. But um, I'm pretty sure that's it for... Well, that's there. not true. There's one more. You can talk about that one because you probably played something in it. Oh, yes. You're talking about Shots Fired. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yes. Shots Fired Tell Marathon uh, was this... Well, it's still going on, I believe, this week. Um, myself and Toucan Sam played a co-op run of Cactus. Nice. Last marathon. Mm-hmm. Right on. Shots fired five. I don't know what number they're up to, but we did we did one last time, and we did a ah uh, shit. Now I can't remember because I know we've done two shots fired. We did three and five. I don't think we did a co op. Maybe we did. I think we did like a three way race for the first time. Anyways, we've done runs for it. It's really it's really cool. It's super chill. It's an all online uh, marathon dedicated to shooter games. So. Yep. First person shooters, third person shooters, arena shooters, twin stick shooters, etc., etc., etc. Hence the name, Shots Fired. So that's still going on. I believe that's still going on tonight, tomorrow, and the next day. I it's... just want to insert a little comment in here. Mm-hmm. My ad hoc idea this time eh? is twin stick. Oh, jeez. I know. Let me sit down. Twin be, still your, be still your heart. <laughs> You're going to like what I did. I guarantee it. Stop that. <laughs> Every Get out. time. <laughs> this is so silly. At least I didn't say something like, you're going to like the way it plays or something. Yeah. Uh, I'd get really salty about that. If you said <laughs> I mean, that one. you know, it's fine. Go on, though. But anyway, <laughs> shots fired. Uh, it started off as like a, a one or two day marathon, and now it's expanded out to a week long marathon. So it's gotten more popular each time they did it. They do two major ones a year. Uh, it's it's just a good time for some of the alternative, alternative music, alternative marathons. Yeah. Uh, I thought about submitting something for this one, but then it kind of fell at a weird day and a weird kind of date range. I'm already super busy, so I'm like, ah, all right, maybe next time. Fair enough. But yeah, so that's going on. Are we done with marathon? Anybody else know of another marathon that's going on right now? I don't believe so. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it's really cool because all of these in your basement or in mm-hmm. your living room marathons mm-hmm. have been popping up lately L- ours is literally going to be in a basement so. i mean that's that's how you kind of grow it organically like you don't decide oh dang i'm gonna have like a huge marathon you just kind of like i better go book that hotel now and get myself a <laughs> walk yeah, going yeah, exactly. yeah you well, just kind of you, you grow it you know year by year and if it's something that you want to keep doing you just kind of let it you know oh, bloom yeah. and, and become its own thing yeah you, you hear stories about people planning like big bang events like that yeah, yeah. <laughs> excuse me that totally fuck oh, yeah. because they are not ready at you, all to handle it yeah. So, yeah that's not something we wanted to do I'm so yeah looking at you midwest speed fest. <laughs> it worked oh, out harsh. though barely barely 
even though they started eight hours late. <laughs> yeah, well. And then they lost their stream tech midway through. Oof. Yeah. They had to switch from OBS to something else. Oh. oh. That was just, that's why it, it got affectionately named Midwest Meme Fest last year because yeah. it was just a big meme. <laughs> but it ended up working out. They have a lot better stuff going on this year. I love you, Sex Rex. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you learn a lot when you do yeah. big events. You learn a lot when you do small events. You, you sure learn do. a lot when you put on events that you have no idea what you're doing. Yeah. And you end up in an environment where you're like, oh, I thought I had this infrastructure. And mm-hmm. you don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bye-bye. Yep. So. That's <laughs> what happens. So. Yo, dog, we heard you like resilient streams. So we put a backup in your backup. Yeah. Yeah. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, okay. No, no, I got you. And All it right. just reminded me of something I saw on the internet earlier today. Uh oh. Yeah. Um, it was this short little clip of a video where there was a German car backing into a, a, a spot in a garage. Okay. And as the car started backing up, the trunk flew open. And <laughs> this girl with a clarinet was playing the, the note. And it just kept <laughs> getting faster as the car got closer. And it was like, <laughs> what? Good old German oh, engineering oh, there, oh, I guess. Yes. <laughs> yeah. you silly folk. Why? It, it was it was funny. Why even? That is pretty good. <laughs> Calling out those current memes. We're gonna listen back to this show in the future and be like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" <laughs> uh, it's yeah. whatever. Does it matter? It was a product of its time. Do you remember that <laughs> meme from the one day? Can we not? <laughs> six months ago. <laughs> can't you don't? <laughs> can't you don't? Shoutouts uh, to shoutouts. That's good. Yeah. All right, so that's it for marathon stuff. Right yeah, now. yeah. A uh, major lol tournament game crashed 32 minutes in. Oh, oh. Whoopsie doodle. So how did that happen? Uh, not sure. Not oh, sure. No. But it was. I want. It's either the third or the fourth game in a five or seven game series. Oh. So the powers that be, namely Riot Games, mm. declared a winner. Uh, based on because the team was already two two zero or three zero ahead in the game count. And they were already significantly ahead in that match, so mm, it's kind of fair enough. Whatever. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> bet some, yeah. I mean, I bet some folks still feel pretty cheated. Oh about yeah, that, I'm sure but, they do. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure they do. But hey, at least they didn't change the rules midway through. <laughs> Z3R. <laughs> I'm assuming. Yeah. You, I'm assuming we're we're throwing shade on that. No, 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 I'm we're not. Throwing shade why on, why on, aren't uh, we? Well, of course, but there was the other <laughs> major tournament where they changed the rule. They released a patch midway through the tournament. Was that not Z3R? No, that was like, I want to say it was Dota 2. Yeah, there, really? it was. Yeah. It was. It was a oh. big yeah. ass tournament. We talked about it last time, I think. Okay, yeah. that's fair. I'm thinking yeah. of uh, the Zelda Random. Well, yeah, We're so talking like randomizer, yeah. AAA patch. Yeah. You know, like, like yeah. major esports. Whoops. Yeah. Don't do that, you idiots. <laughs> but they did. Well, it, so. yeah. Okay. Neat. Whatever. Good shit. <clears throat> Valve restricts Dota 2 and CSGO in-game items trading in the Netherlands. Yeah. After their local laws clamp down on loot boxes with items that are transferable. Hey, can like uh, can y'all send some of that over here? Because I'm freaking real sick real of real loot nice. boxes. I'm I'm serious. That'd be real nice. Agreed. The whole gambling thing, you know. Yeah. Fucking EA. <laughs> Idiots. Oh hi. EA is just Idiots. not the greatest. Hello, Chase. Oh boy! Minecraft's latest update opens up crossplay to PC, Xbox, Switch, and mobile. Right on. Guess who's missing? Hmm. I wonder if it might be Sony. Ah! <laughs> ding 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 ding. So, so wait. So wait. Who made that decision? Was it Sony or? <laughs> yeah. Okay. It was. I didn't Sony. even need to ask. No, it was Sony. <laughs> so way to go, Sony. You are holding back on the crossplay yet again. You know, just taking a pickaxe to the foot there. Yeah, yeah. they're not doing the greatest on that stuff no, nowadays no, no, what with the not. fortnites and the now the minecrafts and just yeah yeah it's like we love your console but you're kind of being a dick mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. just a little bit just a little bit anyway. hey, wow. <laughs> <laughs> more esports news peru's thunder predator team for dota 2 was disqualified from the 15 Ooh. million dollar finals for using an quote-unquote Illegal mouse. Oh. Namely, Illegal mouse? Yeah. Namely, a Razer Synapse 3 with pre-programmed macros. That's that's considered illegal? Apparently. Oh. Yeah. Well, I today mean, I learned. I mean, actions I wonder minute, if its left mouse button was broken. <laughs> womp womp. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, wow. I'm not sorry, Razer. Your products are shit. Uh, they're a little bit overpriced. And they break. And yeah. they I, I have opinions. <laughs> Many I mean, opinions. Also anecdotes, really. Oh, yeah. But... I, I, <laughs> opinions formed from those anecdotes. Yeah. And There's... also their mouse pad driver. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. This is the dumbest. They they all it's suck. The dumbest bullshit. I, I I'm using a mouse from a different company right now, and it's the same bullshit, just different skin on it. So, uh, although isn't that one's build quality at least better? Oh God, yeah. No, like I'm gonna come. Yeah, I'm gonna come right out and say like freaking. Uh, so I I've been a, a razor user for I want to say maybe five, six, seven years, something like that. Mm. Because you know, like I I liked the approachable. Um, you know, like it, it, it kind of felt felt like a compromise when I went and got their mechanical keyboard. Like it was sort of cheap, but you know, it seemed like it was an okay build quality. But mm-hmm. like I, I've been through three mouse or three mice and two keyboards, <laughs> no, three keyboards what? through Razer, and they've all exhibited the same issue, which is Boy. you know, like for whatever reason, it uh, like the it just mechanically wears out especially the mice and anyone else who has used a razor mouse for any extended period of time Good can shit. relate because just for whatever reason the switch that they use in in their mice just wears out you know within a very short period of time did they take a design cue from apple on their keyboards <laughs> yeah, i have no do idea do their keyboards start wearing off the coating on screens as you close the laptop lids on them <laughs> it's it's really? gotten Oh, wow. that's real bad. Sorry, I, if you're going to throw Apple under the bus, let's just make it all the way. <laughs> I, oh yeah, we may as well commit to it. Yeah. yeah we may as well like, commit to mm. it. Well, anyways, the Apple keyboard thing, their little butterfly switches or whatever, oh, yeah. Yeah. getting dust under their switches just suddenly made them not work. Yes. Yeah. Super. With, with nice. some of that hardware, or they'll like make it's... them press up against the screen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's gotten significant enough where, like, you know, with Apple and and Razer and stuff like that, like, you'll see a lot of videos about little hacks people have come up with. Like, oh, yeah, you know, you keep having to replace your shit every time. Here's a really simple fix. And, like, apparently it works. But, you know, the the fact that, like, years later, neither company has really improved their stuff. And Ah. we're still finding the same issues. Oh, yeah, I could go on a tirade about all yeah, that. All yeah, night, you but... still love paying a price premium for all this crap, right? Yeah, it's the best. Mm, well, oh, bro. It, it's it's weird because like Razer's priced below their competition, but you kind of <laughs> understand why after a while. <laughs> so, I was just making a joke because <laughs> I'm using a Mac laptop right I, now. I got, oh, yeah, I get where the keys are totally pressing into the screen. I, well, I got no defense for Apple. Sorry, yeah. but well, while we're talking about shit that's overpriced and breaks easily, hmm. woo, the Microsoft Xbox Elite controller, the grips apparently blister off really easily. Oh, oh. no! Yeah, so I have to, I had to glue this one twice now. Wow! I have to reglue this one, I think. Yeah, you might want to let them know. Yeah. Oh, it's it's a known problem. Yeah. You be- you, <laughs> you might want to let them know yourself because they might offer you a new one. Oh, they yeah. sure as hell won't. No. Yeah, oh, right. Well, okay. No, there are some replacement grips that you can buy out there through some shady yeah. ass third party website. Plus, the glue's been holding pretty well and it doesn't really bother me. So it's like, eh. But it, eh, I mean, it's eh. the grips. Like, it's not the switches, right? No, no, the switches have been fine. Yeah, they've that's... been perfectly good, which is okay. great. It's just like, <laughs> well, actually, <laughs> Damn it. But- I, I lied. The listen link isn't tied to an RSS feed, but I can get you one because we have one on the podcast page. Do we? You made one for Jeff. Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I just make stuff and I forget about it. Yeah. It's just like, somewhere. whatever. Where the hell is it? Whatever. Yeah, it's... Uh, I'll just paste the just, link to the podcast page right now. If you open the link, doesn't it show a little RSS thing in the address bar or whatever? Uh, we would have more than one, though, because there was one for <laughs> Seeking Affinity and one for Instant Credits. Yes, I believe I did set they trying to, like, kill I off RSS? Oh, they have been trying for a while. Yeah. I it's not bad. That. Like, it's very yeah. easy to consume. Yeah. <laughs> That's why they're killing <laughs> it off. <laughs> like, we have a proprietary solution that we want to be able to profit from. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I swear we have one somewhere. It's just... We'll find keeping it. me right now. We'll yeah. find it in the Toonski section, which should be coming up soon. Indeed. Well, actually not soon, because I'm not even through the rest of my garbage. Yeah, I still got some myself. All right, so one last esports thing. Blizzard and Disney have partnered up to bring the Overwatch Esports League quarter, semi, and final finals to ESPN and Disney channels. Blizzney. Huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I thought first, too. I'm like, yeah. what? Head so, tilt? 
You know, like I, on one hand, I'm like, okay, that's pretty awesome that they're they're bringing like esports to uh, you know to Quote like unquote, major mainstream, yeah, right? to the mainstream. But on the other hand, it's like, mm, well, it's probably going to be you know the games that I just don't give a shit about. Well, at least they're <laughs> doing it. Just starting with the quarterfinals, they're yeah, doing it. they're not doing like the qualifying rounds or the seeding rounds yeah, or anything like no. that that nobody would really they're, care about. They're they're bringing the the prize money matches to TV. So yeah. I expect I guess it's a start. Either Zac Efron or Mickey Mouse <laughs> to commentate on all of these <laughs> oh, things. Oh boy! Now. Well, who knows? Or Hannah right. Montana. Yeah. Sorry, can't forget that one. <laughs> we can forget that. Uh, <laughs> fair. But yeah, so it started on the 11th, which was two days ago. This Wednesday. This past Wednesday, mm -hmm. and they'll have it for however long this tournament runs on ESPN three, two. I think there's an ESPN now. The Ocho. I don't think the Ocho exists just yet. Damn it. Yeah. But we have, we have some Ocho other numbers. Does, does it already? Well, I thought they were only up to like five or something. <laughs> no. no? Awesome. Holy shit, dude! That's great. I love it. <laughs> yeah. but... And then there's Speed Randomania. Gaming, the Ocho. Oh, there's... like Randomania four. Are they up to four yet? Something I, like that. I, I, they're already up to three. But... Randomania. Jeez, that's awesome. <laughs> now I can't <laughs> yeah. stop thinking about the Hulk. Anyway, that was Randy Savage, dude. Yeah, but yeah. now I'm thinking of Hulk Mania. <laughs> no. Was it... No. Stop. Hulk Mania was a thing. Yeah, it was a thing. Okay, that's why it's like it's in the name. Wrestlemania. Uh, yeah. What did I do? Okay, that's that's all the news I got because we did the SGDQ thing. Right? Rock 'em sock 'em robots. Anyway, all right. <laughs> so today marks a big release for Square Enix Switch only. Currently, we are talking about Octopath Traveler. Yes, it is what has been dubbed as the spiritual successor to Final Fantasy VI. Are we gonna get it? Are we gonna play it? It <laughs> should already be yes, in the mail. And maybe I, I really hope I so didn't i want it before i left today i want to explore that game with you like i'm really excited for this particular release let's yeah. get some kind of display set up yeah otherwise it's going in handheld mode and you're not getting to see it either oh, that boy. or we're just going to hook it up to the ddr machine that's what i was thinking mean? too i was, I was thinking, you already got a display i want to there, stream it you? damn it but anyway uh, yeah. yeah so octopath traveler released today um I want to see what the new Metacritic score is real quick, because earlier today it was 84. Octopath Traveler Metacritic. All right, let's see what it's at currently. Fake drum roll. Whatever. Internet says resolving host. Come on, really? Ah, take that, uh, Internet. And oh, now it's looking for fonts.googleapis.com. Oh, for fuck's sake. It's you still like at 84. It. All right, good. <laughs> Neat. I don't know why DNS is being so weird. But anyway, yeah, it's sitting at 84 right now, which is pretty good. Um, really looking forward to playing it. Um, I have been told that it is very similar to a Japan-only Square uh, RPG called mm. Live a Live, Live Alive. Yeah, Live it's, Live. It's like yeah. Live uh, Evil or whatever. They got some weird things going on with the second half of it to make yeah. a yeah. sort of palindrome mirror thing. I think. Sure. Yes. Whatever. Yeah. It's <laughs> that. And I haven't played it, and I've been told that I, I should really check it out at some point, and somehow I've only heard it in the last year. So yeah. get you a translation. Yeah, I'm sure I already have one on my good old pack on the SD to SNES. But oh, I think it's on it's, that system. I want to say it is, but I'm not 100%. Maybe it's PlayStation, I don't know. Yeah, so I I've, no I've never idea. heard of it. I, I <laughs> Like, a PlayStation would sound more, more plausible, because I swear I would have heard of, of it by now if it was on the Super. Kill a kill. That's what I kept getting it confused with. That's a totally different yeah, thing. Yeah, it sure is. Uh, yeah, that's, it sure uh, is cotton. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Moving on. I, I really hope the game's in the mail, though, because I would love to play it this weekend at some point if we can get everything set up. It is the Super Famicom. Holy cow. Good good shit. Yeah. Wow. Oh. I've, I am really surprised. Yeah, we should totally check this out. All right. More RPG goodness. You remember FF8? Pepperidge Farm remembers vaguely. Yeah, I I don't know a whole lot of people that remember that game. I couldn't pick it out of a lineup. <laughs> I'm gonna get fought <laughs> if I trash talk FF8. It's okay. Oh, can I trash talk I, FF8? Yeah, I mean, can I we think, all get fought? I think I Bond know. and I will will happily trash it. It's got great music and everything else sucks. Moving yeah. on. Did I play it once back at the apartment? Yeah, I think no. Or was it wasn't that at X? the apartment? I, I, pl I played one for like an hour and a half and then said, fuck it. It was probably 10. Okay, that could be true. Um, mm. 
But anyway, yeah. there's a character in there. Her name is Renoa. She has a dog. She shoots the Arf. dog off her arm as Whomp. an a, as a weapon. Oh, okay. Arf. Her dog Angelo. <laughs> dog launcher. Yeah, for real. Angelo yeah. Launcher is the name of anyway. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah. So Renoa and her dog joined the vast crew of the city of Final Fantasy NT. I thought that was interesting. Um, one of <laughs> whatever. Wait, they made a Final Fantasy Network transmission. Thank that's the joke. name. Sorry, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I was just like, cool. I don't know where to go with this, but that's fine. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, other RPG except more in the adventure realm. Monster Hunter World was announced for PC, and guess what? It released on the 9th of August. Yeah, they've been able to keep that one under wraps for uh Yeah, it was just enough. announced like four days ago. Surprise? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that way I don't need to buy it on another system I don't care about. Like, how is anybody in this day and age keeping something that high profile under wraps for that long? Well, Who good knows? on them for doing it. I, I hope it's not a really shitty PC port. Oh, yeah. wait, speedrunners. Hope it's a really shitty PC <laughs> yeah. port. Well, I don't know. <laughs> oh, no, no. Sonic 06. <laughs> um, turn that into PC. It's fine. Uh, so have you heard of a movie called The FP? Oh, Negative. oh, this. Let's just let <laughs> Tony talk about that one. The FP, huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's like DDR crossed with Mad Max post-apocalyptic movie. Yeah. It's fucking weird. It's rhythm okay. gaming to stay alive. I can't, like, oh, the plot is so, uh. Transparent? If I, like, if I were to, to say what the plot is, it's. Yeah. Very, yes. it's very benign. Oh, they they try to be all of the eighties. Oh, Five point six stars. It's incredibly juvenile, and is it that good? Uh I don't know uh, about that. I got through about ten minutes of cringing before I said, "Make it stop." Yeah, like it's, it's not so over. It's the not top. quite the room good, but uh, uh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a sweater with this one on it. <laughs> but yeah, it's basically uh asserting dominance oh. over a neighborhood through playing beat beat revelation yep <laughs> wow i am not kidding way to go guys <laughs> really thinly veiled on that one oh yeah no this is uh yeah all right so it's on the thing. scale of video game based movies how good is it it's not as Bad good as the it? Super Mario Brothers movie. Yeah. It's... Oh shit! Really? <laughs> oh no! Yeah. Oh, that was real bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I... it's not as product placementy as like the Wizard, but you okay. know, I I yeah. really don't know how to describe it. It's you'll know <laughs> if you watch the first ten minutes of it whether you like it or not, because it's just. Yeah, well, but uh, on to the actual news, though. Huh. It has a sequel coming out. Oh no! Why? <laughs> Beats of Rage, JTRO. Oh, no! <laughs> Why? Apparently, a teaser trailer oh, was announced like within oh, the dear. last few days. They, they have they have upped the production value, and I'm oh. just I don't know how to feel about this. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, I took yeah. a, I took a quick scan down the cast list. I didn't recognize any of them. Yeah, you names, won't. So it, it can't be that it, good. It's a love it's... story to the Bamani community. <laughs> I mean, it's not like Doom that had the rock. So yeah, it's like, uh, fuck. Hey, you know what? I want to watch the Silent Hill movie. You're gonna ask me which one? Which one? No, Resident Evil. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, okay. Wait, Silent Hill. Yeah, it totally had a movie. Did it? Yeah. It was really weird. I didn't watch it. But yeah, if, too it's, many yeah. if it's it. Resident Evil, I would ask which one because there's like seven of them. Yeah, and there's so I think like, I watched two of them. They 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 kind of loosely started with uh following some elements of the game, but like Ooh. just wildly deviated from that afterwards. I just got an idea that's totally off the rails, hmm. which is funny. <laughs> um, <Evil>. yes, <laughs> no, we got to get some Dark Side Chronicle streams oh, going. God, no. Fucking linear launcher. Oh, just... that's so <laughs> dumb. No, I, it's just the I'm worst. not familiar with this one. Murders the game. Okay, so we had a lot of fun uh, playing Resident Evil Dark Side Chronicles for the Wii. It basically took scenes from, I guess, the first four Resident Evil games at the time and kind of did a best mm. of, and you got to upgrade equipment as you went along hmm. based on like the gold you found, et cetera, and you know, yeah. destroying everything you possibly can will get you more gold, et cetera. So yeah, no, it was a really fun game that we played a whole lot. Um there was another uh Resident Evil compilation, Umbrella Chronicles, was yeah, it? Yes, it was yeah. Umbrella Chronicles was kind of the first one 
And then, then they did Dark Side Chronicles afterwards. Which was arguably a lot better. Well, yeah, it was... There was one more, wasn't sequel. there? Sequel. I feel like there was, but I don't think we ever played it. Oh, I, say I there did may play have been. Umbrella also... Chronicles. It was very mediocre. It wasn't the greatest. Yeah. It was... A, it, I wouldn't even call it a competent rail shooter. It was a yeah. It was a mediocre rail shooter with the Resident Evil dressing. Yeah, I do like rail shooters, but I didn't really like that one. Yeah, it was House of the awesome. Dead translated really <laughs> well to Wii. It yeah, did. it did. House of the Dead Overkill was <laughs> oh, so good. Oh dear. Anyway, I've derailed everybody now. <laughs> yeah, talking about sure rails have. games. Yeah, you sure have. We need to stream. Gone off the rail shooter. I know that was the that was the joke. Yeah. Thanks. You suck at me. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, that's it for my news. All right. Anything else besides marathons, rail shooters, and esports? <laughs> I mean, it's in the game. Yeah, there, there's some I, other I, stuff. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so, as uh, you know, it's kind of weird that I'm mentioning WoW news because I, I Again? brought. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I, I have not uh, touched World of Warcraft since uh, it, the new expansion was in Alpha, which was really fantastic, by the way. I just have not had the time or just kind of itch to play. Has it um, made it out of alpha now? It's it's in beta currently, but uh, there is a pre-patch. And what that means is essentially they're taking some of the features of the newest expansion and applying it to retail. Uh, ah. So, like, you know, some new talents, maybe PvP rebalancing, that kind of thing. Okay. And that is going to go live on the 17th of this month. So... Yeah, they're they're bringing uh they're bringing uh some of the features from the new expansion kind of in preparation, you know, to get players like you know hyped for it and stuff like that and and prepared. So, so yeah, um, that's uh, I have no idea what's in it. Like I said, I haven't touched WoW since I wasn't playing Alpha. So, um, but yeah, I don't know. I feel inclined to my pick it back up who knows it's a thing that exists yes at this point. yes it is yeah. it's going to be significant right. to people who play wow so wow 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 um epic announced that the uh oh, the awesome. unreal engine marketplace um they're given a they're given a uh, a raise to creators takes they're, so uh originally it was if you made something and put it on the unreal engine marketplace you got 70 percent of uh of the proceeds mm-hmm they're bringing that up to 88%, which if you compare it to, you know, like a lot of other marketplaces where you're creating your own content, that is, I mean, it was already significant, but 88% is pretty awesome. Yeah, that's that's certainly much better. I think the quote unquote industry standard is pretty much 70-30. Yeah. At least around asset marketplaces like Unity, I think, is 70 30. There yep. might be a few other independent ones out there that are 70 30. Hell, there I are think a couple even... that were doing it even lower than that. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, Ooh. like a 65 Ew. 35 type thing. So, so that's really, that's really awesome, you know, to kind of to see that, like, you know, just kind of putting more money in, in, uh, in creators' pockets. So I guess it's, it's fueled it's by. Step. The popularity of Fortnite because there's a lot of uh, huh. people making like you know um, original content for Fortnite and stuff like that. So, um, so yeah, they're all like, "Cool, have at it, and enjoy our platform." Tim needs money for college. Uh, for, for yeah, cool, for cool egg. Yeah, oh, that <laughs> cool egg. <laughs> right yeah. on. Well, I mean, it's it's good to see kind of industry leaders do that because you would think. With the popularity of Fortnite and all that, they're raking in mad stacks of oh, cash. Oh, hell yeah. Why would you diminish that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? But hey, that's, yep. that's a great step. It's a great step. Yep. Right on. So, um, Also, uh, Bard's Tale 4. I'm not familiar. So Nor Bard's, am I. Bard's Tale is an, uh, is an RPG uh, series that started in the 80s. I recall Maybe playing I the Commodore version this. of this. So Bard's Tale 1 through 3 uh, were released by Electronic Arts like way back in the day. Before they were EA? Well, yes, before yeah. they were EA. Well. So was this like referenced in uh, Stranger Things, by the way? Bard's Tale? I don't recall or specifically. Was it, gosh, was it the audiobook that we listened to, Ready, Ready Player One, before it got a movie? I think it got a shout out in that, but um, gosh, because now I'm thinking, it's uh, like, why does that sound familiar? But I yeah. don't recall seeing. I, it. I have heard of it. I am aware of it as a series. I wasn't aware they were up to four. Yeah, well, oh. they're not quite up to four, but they're going to be well, releasing eventually. Bard's Tale Four: Barrows Deep uh, in September of this year. Neat. Four. 
Well, yes, Pirates Hill 4, but I mean, like, yeah, for which or, platforms? Um, you know, I should have put that in my notes. <laughs> um, I'm going to guess that it's coming to PC at the very least. I don't um, know. So this isn't one of those retro Kickstarters where they're... No, this is, like, legit. Of it again, right? Well, that's curious. Uh, the little Google info pop-up that, you know, it's like, hey, let's compile some info. Uh-huh. Uh, release date 2018. Engine, Unreal, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. However... Platforms, Microsoft Windows, Linux, Macintosh operating systems. So it's probably going to be a Steam platform thing for yeah. all Sounds three. Sounds like it would be. Yeah. Eat over eat Right on. So, yeah, Dungeons given the fact that, like, drinking. the last Bard's mm. Tale that was released was in the late 80s, it's uh, going to be interesting to see where they take this since it's been almost, like, three well, decades. Yeah. <laughs> that's, almost that's four, quite, perhaps. Almost depending four. On what 80s. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's pretty wild. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm really excited to see how they build on that. Um, Intel's ninth generation SKUs were leaked. Um, so the uh, it, it's going to be quote well unquote. leaked is is kind of uh, so there was there were some documents that were released. Um, some of them were uh, kept released, and some of them Intel decided, oh shit, we better pull this. Um, but they revealed that, you know, it's going to be Coffee Lake S. So kind of a, a refresh of Coffee Lake. Wait a sec. They're yeah. they're subscribing to the adding S things to make them fast? I guess. Oh, okay. Cool. Good <laughs> good tech naming schemes yeah. being stolen from other crappy companies. But yeah, just like 8th Gen, it's going to be, you know, the i3s are going to have, you know, four cores, four threads. The i5s <laughs> are going to have six and six. Wait a sec. Four core, four thread. Stop! <laughs> Get oh. out! <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! Belt, 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 belt. <laughs> uh, you're not wrong. Uh. And the i7 is going to be six and twelve, and the i9. Well, these are the rumored parts because these weren't found in any of the documentations. But I guess these were from prior leaks. So the i7 is going to be six and twelve, and the i9 is going to be eight and sixteen. Um. But uh, yeah, essentially, it's just going to be a refresh of uh, the Coffee Lake that we currently know and love. Question mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of weird to say that since we've kind of switched over to Ice Ryzen. Lake. Well, uh, too, we got to talk about Ice Lake. Yeah. Though. Well, I thought Ice was Ice Lake not the one after Coffee Lake. This is one in between Coffee Lake and Ice Lake. I don't know. I stopped it's, paying well, this, attention to their uh, fucking the, uh, the same. The source that I read on this was uh, it was titled Coffee Lake S, which was essentially like a refresh of Coffee Lake. So my guess is uh, yeah, that's out. supposed to come like. Uh, all right, Wikipedia. And... What do they say? What does the uh, sum of all human knowledge say? Really hoping. <laughs> 28 yes. everybody. While you look that up. Well, they don't seem to have an article or an entry for Coffee Lake S inside of Coffee Lake. Hmm. That was sure some thunder. Oh, sure is. Yep. Thunderstorms. And Woo! streams down. Oh, it's <laughs> yeah, fine. Right. Let's worry it's about fine. it. <laughs> All right, let's look at the list of Intel microarchitectures. Yep. Sure. Let's see about that. Coffee Lake S. What the hell? Oh, okay. That's the desktop line. Because apparently Coffee Lake H and U are going to mobile, apparently. Yep. Um, oh. Wow, this is the end of the 14 nanometer process. Well, no, we're looking at Cascade Lake yet in 2018, apparently. And Whiskey Lake and Amber Lake. I wonder how only. up to date those really are because... Well, I mean, they've got... Weird. I can't, I can't make heads or tails of this. Yeah. It's fine. But to move to a 10 nanometer <laughs> process, which is down from 14, we go to Ice Lake, and supposedly yeah. that's in 2019, followed by Tiger Lake in 2020. Yeah. Shrug? Uh, they've been trying the 10 nanometer thing for three years. Yeah, the recent rumors are saying that they're really struggling to, to go from 14 to 10. And yet, AMD did, right? Was that well, not their next upcoming product line? I thought Threadripper <laughs> 2 was 10 nanometer. Am they, I wrong? They measure things differently. Yeah. Uh, between Intel and AMD. Are they fake nanometers? No, it's... Hey, I don't know. I just know that they have different systems for measuring it. What the fuck? Yeah, All right, whatever. exactly. Yeah, but, so at this point, like, you know, hey, the, the nanometer thing is kind of like a... Um, <laughs> it almost seems right, like a marketing it. thing, so... Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. EP and it is. That's why yeah. we're back to core counts. Yeah. It's easier to market that <laughs> shit. <laughs> right. And now everybody's like, but, but, but the single core performance is. I'm like, shut up. I don't care. Yeah. At this point, uh, everything's just a big flop. Anyway. Yep. Uh, are we finally. And I've got one more thing. God damn it. So, <laughs> hey, you, know, you had your chance. <laughs> Shut up over there. For more than enough, so, right? yeah, I'm pretty sure that all of you uh, have heard about the happenings with ArenaNet. <laughs> hmm. oh. Yeah. Big so, yes. <laughs> yeah, so uh, um, one, of the, uh, one of their employees, uh, Jessica Price, I guess, uh, picked a fight. Um, well, maybe not picked a fight, but was uh, kind of upfront, like unrestricted, I would say, uh, with someone on on Twitter, and uh, um, yeah, Arena Net just decided to can her, and um, I guess like Peter Fries, who was also another employee there, uh, like tried to step in and uh, and defend her, and he got canned too, mm. and yes. This is, you know, like something that is wildly unprofessional on the part of ArenaNet. They're yes. like, oh, that's being very charitable. Yeah, yes, it is. <laughs> oh, yeah. my goodness. It was just gonna, outright shitty on, gonna, on ArenaNet's part. You outstrip but, SGDQ with but, that charity. Yeah. But no, no buts. There They're are no fucking buts. bastards is what yeah. they are. But, but, but at will employment. Fuck you, ArenaNet. Yeah. yeah. You're not wrong. I have some very strong feelings about this in oh, case yeah. you couldn't tell. <laughs> I've had some strong feelings about them since before then. Oh, so at this point yeah. I'm feeling like eh, this is like no surprise, but I also, you know, feel kind of upset over uh, it still. Oh, uh, this is just bad continuing bad precedent that Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, it's it's going to be, you know, really crappy because um, you know, as uh <laughs> As it becomes easier to, you know, get people canned over, you know, um, essentially sticking up for themselves, uh, you know, or their team or, you know, anything like that. It, oh, I've got a question. Is it lawsuit material? No idea. Yeah. I we're, think it really depends on the state because if it's at will, they can just can you for whatever the hell they want. Yeah, pretty that's much. That's true. There doesn't. Like, it's we like that. We are not lawyers. Yeah. From our perspective, I, I don't want to speak for anybody, but. It, from our, from my perspective, it doesn't seem like there was any whiff of discrimination or anything like that, despite how it appears. Yeah, <laughs> like here, sure in, here in Wisconsin, it's a right to work state, which pretty much means that an employer can can you for just about any reason that they right. that they feel that's yeah. you know that isn't just outright illegal, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah, on the receiving end of a get fucked, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a there's a whole bunch of conditions about protected classes and discrimination and you know, all that sort of thing, which I don't think any individual could really say given the situation what is or is not legal about it. So yeah. Lay Yeah. Nobody really knows. It's yeah. fucking terrible is what it is. Yeah, I wanted to I wanted to call specific attention to that one because it it was just, you know, um absolutely shitty Un so unethical i think yeah we could, we could probably say pretty confidently just a little yeah uh, just a little bit yeah baby <laughs> so yeah um and i've got one final news item i don't want to drag this out too much this one's going to be short um but uh there are a few games that were uh brought into the origin ecosystem if anybody really cares about that still mm. <laughs> uh. Yeah. So <laughs> stuff like Darksiders War Mastered Edition, um Rhyme Remake. Did we ever figure out how to actually say that? I think it's Rhyme. Okay. Yeah. Rhyme. R -R -Y -M -E, I believe right? I saw that at a marathon and they pronounced it Rhyme. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah, and then there's also uh Orwell Ignorance is Strength, Mad Games Tycoon, uh Jotun Valhalla edition and Ghost 1.0 and Crash Land. So um yeah, it's Still kind of uh, exclusive over in Origin Land, but uh, at the very least, like it sounds like they're actually picking up some games of note. So, yeah, hmm. at least it's not you play. Oh boy, that is a <laughs> I, low I have not bar heard. <laughs> I've not heard of you play in like forever, but I also Good. don't really <laughs> play a whole lot of modern Ubisoft games anyway. So yeah. Anyway. 
Are we moving on to tune skis? I hope so. Yep. All right. <laughs> Having just talked about marathons, I couldn't avoid this one. Oh boy, yeah. We start with Save the Animals by Danny Shock from Super Metroid. Then a remix from Mega Man X4 entitled Flight of the Peacock by Timaeus222. And I've got a remix from Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link, called Do You Need a Light by Platonist.
All right. Eh. That's a, a very odd ending. Yeah. Just like, uh, <laughs> an odd yeah. ending for a song from an odd game. It, it is, is kind of weird. Kind of like they, they have, uh, you know, kind of like the, the extended build up, but then they just end it with that. I'm not going to make a joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Tormod! <laughs> hey. Come on, man! You can't not, do that. You can't the, say that while I'm drinking. <laughs> I mean, anyway, <laughs> let's talk about games we've played. Games wow, we let's just continue played. that joke. Anyway, thank you. Uh, <laughs> this is gonna be. <laughs> Come re- on, man! Get out! <laughs> Get out! <laughs> Get to the Boot. <laughs> yep. Well, as for me, I've played nothing. Moving on. Boo! I've been moving, dude. You yeah. have an excuse. You have a legit. Excuse. We don't even have. Play. We don't have uh, any systems set up whatsoever to play much. I don't of even anything. have a display set. Well, okay, yeah, aside from that, set up, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I yeah, that's sort that's pretty of. much. The, it's it's kind of cool. together enough to play. Not sure if it's safe. I mean, it's but not any less together than it was before. <laughs> there's still a bunch of parts laying Fair. around, so whatever. Yeah, Fair. that's. I mean, the only reason they're plates and stuff. It'll yeah. Be fine. And all of that stuff was hidden from you when you last played on it. It wasn't together at the old place either. Fine. <laughs> Rude. Okay. So nothing and Yep. It and basically that's about it. basically <laughs> DDR. Okay. Yeah. Very good. I, I did I did go to uh Pathfinder. I returned to that. There was a couple weeks um <sighs> in between, so you forgot your character sheet. You forgot the book. You forgot your dice. Yeah, you know why? Because you like I yeah, work no. over on the west. Uh, I work I on the opposite side of town. Like it's and it's, I didn't think to plug in the printer and just try to use it on the Wi-Fi because I forgot I set up for that. So yeah. no, I took pictures of your character sheet <laughs> and sent them to you. Yeah, yeah, it was a good time. That's funny. You e- emailed me a photo of a paper. Awesome. I, the best sure. screenshot. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oi, okay, so I guess I'm gonna <laughs> it play all falls onto you. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. And we That's... move on to song segment yeah, two. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. That's fine. Um, <laughs> all right, so the past one, two, three, four weeks, going oh. on five. What? No, I just remembered that you had your anniversary stream. Yes, yes nice. So actually, I'll talk about that first, come to think of it. So, the 23rd of June, I had my four ish, since it was technically back in May, my, <laughs> my four year stream anniversary. Neat. So Stream anniversary. I know, right? Woo, it's been four years. Has it really been that long? Yes, it has. Yeah. May 2014. On Twitch? Yep. Did you start streaming like two years before me? Wow. May 2014. Huh. Neat. Started, started with Loof Drowsers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. That was a good game. Yeah, because that was the year after we saw it at uh, PAX. Um. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's right. That's right. So yeah, four years. Wow. It, uh, it it feels simultaneously shorter and longer than that. Yeah. Which is how things go apparently. It's quantum. Yeah, right. So, I I took I took a Saturday, a a bulk of the Saturday on the 23rd and streamed for 15 hours. Ooh. Uh three of which was co-op for that night too because it was the fourth Saturday in the month. I'm assuming Boris and and, and double six. six. Wow, yeah, nice. yeah, we got, got the, the whole crew yeah. together. Wow. That <laughs> That's awesome. Just funny. So I, I started off in, in the morning because I'm a big smart guy like that. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> started off with some of the easiest NES games in the world. Battletoads. Of course. <laughs> yep. Very easy. Oh, Very right. Easy. Yes. This <laughs> yeah. was the first Saturday of SGDQ. Yeah. Which is why I couldn't watch much. Well, right. wait, didn't SGDQ start Sunday? Yeah, but I mean, that's like the one the day travel. we were there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I gotcha, I gotcha. So yeah, start with some battle codes. Uh-huh. Double Dragon 2, then. Which Double Dragon 2 is pretty easy. Let's let's be honest about that. But then Double Dragon 3. <laughs> I was going to say, but then there's number three. <laughs> then there's three that happens, which I managed to beat Battletoads, which is amazing. Wow. Oh, nice. No, no continues, which is Very also, nice. also amazing. Yeah. Wow. Um, Double Dragon 2. How was many warps? Sh- uh, to all of them that I could take, so two two warps because i i saw two you warps. start playing it but you didn't get the one at the very beginning of the i didn't game. get the first warp okay no no so that's actually probably what contributed to my success because i racked up a whole bunch of extra lives on the second level which yeah. i normally skip because you're yeah. talking about the cannonball right yeah yeah okay we gotcha <clears throat> or wrecking ball yeah 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 and the dumb birds i hate the birds <laughs> but they actually they were pretty kind to me this time around yeah. so nice. whatever so battletoads double dragon two double dragon three uh, double dragon two i cruise through it's a fairly simple straightforward game 
Double Dragon 3, which I got to the second last room. I screwed myself over twice, so it's like I'm not even mad that I didn't beat this game because one, it's tough, and two, I did some silly things. Yeah. Do you have hot strats? <laughs> For I, which no. game? No, I do not have hot strats. I have zero strats. I have, oh, I hope I win this time strats. <laughs> yeah. My hot strat is just play in a room that is of a higher than average temperature. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Actually, I have to make sure I get the order of these right. So I'm going I'm to look up my playlist real quick here because I'm a big professional streamer. Yep. Well, you didn't call yourself a big dumb idiot this time. No, so. that's true. That's for on stream. Oh, okay. We'll that fix it. I mean, we are on stream. <laughs> we'll fix it in the shrink wrap. That's true. Oh, dear. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> it's at the top. I swear I played these things. <laughs> I did. I did. Oh, I did. Okay. So I had the NES block first, which was those three games. And I'm moving on to some Assault Android Cactus. Good. Right on. Which, I mean, they had the patch drop a month and a half ago. How many PBs like... did you get? Two. Nice. No. Yeah. Actually, no. Three. I didn't do any uh, campaign runs. Oh, okay. But I did in three Infinity Drives. Wow. Did you actually get through? <laughs> mm. So I did an, ac <laughs> <laughs> an accidental ID clear with Cactus. Accident. Yes. Okay. I, I call any clear that I don't deserve to get accidental. Uh, so I totally did not deserve to get a win with Cactus. So you cheesed it? No, no? I didn't. I didn't use the cheese strats on it. I I don't understand how I won, but I won. So I'm like, so oh. how is that accidental? Exactly, right? Like, it's like, I don't deserve to win this, but I somehow won it. So I feel whatever. like this logic is just a giant mind fuck right now. It's, I, just, yeah, I can't it's... handle this. Okay. <laughs> if you want to go and watch it, you'll probably understand, but fair. Let's, be, yeah. let's be honest, I didn't deserve to win that one, but fair, I won it anyways, yeah, so fair. Fair, fucking whatever. I also uh, uh, went through with Licorice, which I made it to 47 out of 50. Which That's is not bad. Which is like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right on. Which, after a very tense cactus clear, is impressive. Mm -hmm. And then I did a holly run, and I got to 45. Oh, okay. Which is like... <laughs> after yeah. the first two runs, is like, well, that's even better. Great. Awesome. <laughs> that's So I'm really like, ah, okay, I can yeah. be proud of this two and a half hours that I dumped into Infinity Drive. So yeah, whatever. totally. Did you manage to snag any of the devs in your chat that day, too? Uh, No, because they live in the Upside Down world. Ah, I guess. Okay. So it's plus 15 hours for them or whatever Ugh. it happens to be. So it's like Fair, fair. So I'm like, yeah, whatever. That's cool. <laughs> They'll we... only catch you while you're playing at Balls 30 in the morning. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> which, is, which is fine. But they stop by every now and again, so that's, that's always really cool. Um, so after that, we moved into some LTTP randos. Right. I, I gave my first kicks at uh, Triforce Hunt. Yeah, I got to see some of that. That was that was a thing. It's an interesting mode. Yeah. It's an interesting mode, and it's actually, on average, shorter than a normal, quote-unquote, normal well, rando. Well, can't you also choose the amount of Triforce pieces you need to find, though? No, which is weird. I thought you could. I, I thought there was easy and normal mode. I feel like there was, at some point, options to choose. Well, you can go for 15 out of 30, 20 out of 30, or 30 out of 30, or something like that. Huh. But I couldn't find those. Yeah, that's so it, curious. So okay. it defaulted to 20 out of 30, which is, right, you know, fine, normal, whatever. whatever. And it went pretty well. <clears throat> I had a sub one. What? I know. It was just like, whoa, what? geez. All right. I knew this was going to be slightly faster, but <laughs> not <laughs> you find like seven pieces in Kakariko or what? Yeah, I think I got out of Kakariko with one of them with six. Jesus. I was like, well, all right. Well, let's see how that goes. The second one was like buck 20, buck 30 or yeah. something like that. So I was like, mm, all right. That's more all right. what I expect. But still, yeah. I mean, that, that's a that's sub a one. That's yeah, exactly. So awesome. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> whatever i mean sure. cool cool and it basically just triggers the end of the game as soon as you get the last wow yep yep cool like, oh, all right well this is neat i think i'll do more of this so i did uh so i actually ended up it turns uh, it into a scavenger hunt i mean it literally <laughs> essentially is. yeah yeah, uh, yeah. so i'm just looking for a lot of the same thing yeah i mean my my route doesn't change because i'm not a great rando player I apparently mean, but hey uh, but it worked out. So I end actually ended up finishing the the rando block like an hour early. So I'm like, fuck, I didn't, I don't, I don't want to dip into my next one just yet. So I ended up booting up some Axelay, which was our Shmup Book Club yeah. uh, game of the month for June. J -j 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 I want to say June. I think it was perhaps. Yeah. So I burned an you know hour and change on that. Yeah. It's like, eh, meh, it was a fun game. Was just yeah. Throw something in there for some. Quote unquote chill out time. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I was like, yeah, all right, cool. So after that, I dipped into overload challenge mode, which, woo, 
Mission Overload. It is, it yeah. is some good shit. It nice. is some real good shit. So I spent like three three hours or whatever on that. And by that time, I was a little, a little tipsy. So, <laughs> you know, probably wasn't at my best yeah. form. But I was having a good time. Bond so doesn't get tired. Matter. Bond gets tipsy. I do get tipsy. <laughs> That's okay, though. Everything's fine when you're tipsy. So... <laughs> I've been recommended by somebody, and I haven't tried it yet, that, you know, when you get far along in a stream and you do end up getting a little tipsy, uh-huh. pop in some NES Paperboy. <laughs> apparently NES that, Paperboy? Apparently that's a trip. Yeah. Um, uh, a I don't know trip? if you... That's yeah, an interesting description for I yeah. don't really trip while I'm drinking. Well, no. I'm not saying it's like that kind of trip, but like... It's, it's probably a good game when you're tipsy. Yeah. yeah I'd probably say that. You're like, God damn it. What the fuck did I hit? I swear I threw it right. Yeah. Take your fucking papers, man. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> fucking <think> skateboarders. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh. Tornadoes of bees and yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah. I, can, I can see that being a good tipsy game. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I remember pay that those, for next time. They got to pay those folks more. Yeah. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> so after Overload, then, it, then came the shit show that was co-op. We had originally planned to play Spelunky <laughs> over Parsec. Oh, okay. I was going to say this is not local then. Okay. No. And I had tested it over Parsec the night before, and it worked it worked fine. It worked fine. Mm-hmm. Try to boot it up. <gasps> Nothing happens. Oh. So I was like, all right, awesome. So I dick around with it for 30 minutes, and I'm like, all right, fine. We better start looking for some different shit. So we had ended up landing on Nuclear Throne. <laughs> Quote, unquote, co-op. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, which was a lot of fun. Which was a lot of fun. We looped a couple times. Wow! Right on. Wow! Um, wow! Wow! wow. <laughs> uh, but it, as soon as you get a certain distance in Nuclear Throne, it's just like, all right, well, good luck. Yeah, it becomes yeah, kind of insurmountable. Yeah. Good luck, yeah. fucker. I mean, just you know, it's, there's no way you're making it any further. But we d- we did reasonably well considering. And that was the that was the fourteen and a half, fifteen hours. <laughs> oh, all right. And I was like, oh, okay, we're tired now. Good night. <laughs> and end, end stream. Yep. Good night. So that That's was a lot so of fun. At desk. So besides that, we, we had kind of leaked into end of June for Schmup Book Club was finishing up on uh, Thunder Force Four for Genesis, which is, which I'm really surprised that I took the boards on that one by yeah. a, a, a pretty wide margin. It was like 1.7 million versus the next. I think EI had the next one at 1.2 million or something. Oh like wow! That. So I'm like oh, yeah. All right, well. Cool, Force 4, Nito. Yeah, that, I think that was yeah. where you ended up sitting last month, too, because you were talking about your point spread. It was the same game the last time we were talking, wasn't it? Uh... Or was this the quarterly game? Oh, no. No, that's right. Thunder... Wait. Thunder... Oh, actually, it must have been May then. I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. Oh, no worries. All right, so actually, it was May. Thunder Force 4 was June. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so we finished that up. And also, it was the end of the second quarter for 2018, so we finished on Maketsuya, and I, I didn't improve on Maketsuya. Yeah, it, was, <laughs> yeah, it, it was looks just really like, difficult. oh, shit. Well, no, that's not true. I improved by, like, 1 million or something, which, wow. when you're dealing with, like, 25 to 26 million, as my previous PB, Fair. wasn't much, yeah. but, hey, it's something. It's a it's PB. Something. Yeah, exactly. A PB's a PB. So that was a thing. So then we started up July's Shmup Book Club of the Month, which ended up being two new games for the third quarter and now the month of July. The Monster Lies game is say? Super EDF. <laughs> <laughs> I had to remember. Super EDF for the SNES. Which is a, it's nice. a, it's a good game. And uh Kenny, one of our Shmup Book Club members, has done some pretty solid work with that one. <laughs> nice. So nobody's beating him. <laughs> Probably ever. So yeah. that that's cool. It's it's a good game. It's a it's an Interesting set of mechanics. That one's you don't have lives, you have hits. You get three hits and you're done, pretty huh. much. And well, the rules of Shmup Book Club. First rule is don't talk about Shmup Book Club. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, second rule it. is no continues. So okay. once you're done, you're done because yeah. continues usually cut your score in a significant amount, so it's not even worth continuing. Yeah. So we just say no, no continues, one credit only. So that's been an interesting process so far, and then the uh, the excuse me, third quarter game now for uh, July through uh, September is uh, Blue Revolver. Hmm. Hmm. It's, uh, Never heard. It's a more of a typical Japanese shmup, uh, very bullet hell. 
<laughs> the very bullet hell. Yeah, of that, that sounds appropriate. But very interesting scoring mechanics as well, which huh. I think makes it appropriate for a, a quarterly one instead of a monthly one, since there's a, a little bit more to parse and understand and learn and optimize. Yeah. I guess I'm never going to be able to optimize any of these <laughs> games, but it's fine. Yeah. All right. So that's that's it for Schmup Book Clubs. How does before you move on, <laughs> mm-hmm. like how does one get into this? Because I'm I'm intrigued myself. Would you like to join? You can join I, if you'd like. I, you know, I need to get my stuff set up. I don't even have a monitor right now, mm-hmm. but yeah, yeah. At, <laughs> yeah. at some point, I would like to, and I don't know if it's like a public thing. I mean, it's like or, anybody can join. You just really need to ask <laughs> okay. about it, sort of thing. We yeah. coordinate it through your eyes Discord. So okay, it's like, you yeah, know, it, just join the Discord. And yeah, play some it, and at that point, like, let's let's get together after the show because I yeah. I want in on this. Yeah, so. sure, 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 sure. Because I'm I'm not good at shmups, but I would oh, like to be. Neither am I. So whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and I figured just you know, kind of bashing my face against these, uh, you know, in the. <laughs> Just the different, you know, varied uh, games and stuff that are available, I think, yeah. would would I, be it, really good for me. So. It, it's an excuse to play different games that you probably wouldn't play. Yeah. Otherwise, so that's that's the intrigue right there. It's it's like you know, it's it's kind of a category where you know, like as an outsider looking in, I might have heard of like a couple dozen shmups right. that are like really popular, and kind of going through a rotation of some of the lesser known ones, I think would be kind of an exciting sure. experience. Like so. I'm kind of in the same boat too. Like I know the the popular ones from the 16 bit days or yeah. whatever, but I'm not up on the modern ones. I'm not up on many of the arcade ones. Yeah. I don't know the the Japanese ones at all. Yep. So it's like, well, there's a whole bunch that I have no idea. I have no idea they existed. Yeah. Well, I, I was kind of aware they existed, but I yeah. haven't played them before. You got to play these on, on like Mame for some of them. Some of them are Mame. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Some of them are Mame. A lot of them are emulator. You know, eight bits. Not, mm-hmm. I don't think we've done any eight bit. I haven't done any eight bit. But sixteen bit, like Genesis, SNES. Yeah. Uh, there may have been a PlayStation one in there at some point, but no, no, you, like Turbo Graphics. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> actually, I've, I only I only joined it uh, starting in May, so there might yeah. have been a couple before then. Anyways, the basic gist of how it works is we pick a different shmup every month, and we've got a different one every quarter. Mm-hmm. And we all join a Discord call while we're playing on Thursday nights, and it's just like, you know, shoot the shit while we're shooting some shit. So whatever. Oh, wow, that's I like that. Yeah, you like that? That one's free. That one's <laughs> yeah. free. You can have that. Yeah, good, because I'm copping it. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's it's a good time. It's just, you know, different games, and then, then we vote on the next one. So I think, I don't know how the system works. I really don't pay attention to it, but... Whoever quote unquote wins the shmup at the end of the month uh, gets a choice on what games go in to get voted. And then there's like a random selection of the next two in the so one, two, and three okay. get a choice. Pretty much is how it works out, I think. Right on. So, so my my selection for the vote was Gradius Three Arcade. Nobody liked that one. Apparently, <laughs> it's like ah, all right, okay, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Apparently it is, and I quote, "Turbo Rude." So, oh, <laughs> <laughs> Turbo, Turbo Rude, Rude. Turbo Rude. I'm like, yeah, I've always wanted to play this one, but apparently nobody else does. So Turbo Rude. Rude. Yeah, most of these shmups are pretty mm. rude. Like mm. you have to be up on it a little bit to even survive. So, whatever. but it's a good time. It's fine. What? Turbo Rude instead of Mother Sword. <laughs> <laughs> I had right. to bring it up. It's been Sorry. a while. <laughs> Sorry, I would turn on the effects, but I don't want to screw anything up. Yeah, no, 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 we're good. All right, so besides Shmup Book Club, then, I've been playing Overload as part of my normal stream, and I've I've been through the campaign one and a quarter, maybe one and a third times, because I went through it on kind of the middle difficulty, and it was not difficult necessarily when I wanted to get it a feel for the kind of the normal campaign levels. And then, in my infinite wisdom, I started playing on the hardest difficulty (laughs) just because, and it went okay for the first like two levels, two and a half maybe. But then. But, I mean, (laughs) the hard, okay, so there's five standard difficulties, right? It's like trainee, rookie, hotshot, ace, and insane is the last one. But once you go through on, I want to say hotshot or greater, you unlock one called insane plus, Hmm. which is like insane. However, you don't get like, in level saves oh so you start at the beginning of the level if you die and that's it <laughs> oh oh so there's no checkpoints there's no yeah well, there's well, there's no checkpoints in the game at all you can manually save oh at, I at, get at you, any I get point you. during the game for any of the other previous five difficulties 
But besides that, you also get half of the most difficult settings uh, shield pickups, too. Oh. So it's like, whoop! <laughs> <laughs> On top of everything doing just bananas amount of damage, <laughs> you now get half the shield pickups. So it's like, okay. <laughs> Bananamage. Good luck. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Good luck, fucker. <laughs> so I, I, I persisted with that for like three or four nights. And then I'm like, okay. Yeah, all right, that's fair. Let's move on to challenge mode. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Nice. So I've been on challenge mode for the past week and a half, and I'm going to do one more week of it next week because it's just super fun, and I love it so much. Uh, besides that, the typical randos now on Saturday nights. I have substituted one of my normal rando runs for a Triforce hunt run Ooh. since that ends up being a little bit shorter. Nice. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. It's, it's a good variation of it, I think. Uh, at some point, I'd like to try a key sanity variation of it as well. That's going to take a long time. <laughs> yeah. So, so that, that might be a one and done type of night. I think the the order of like evolution for what people go for once they get bored, you know, you start with normal mode, then you go to open mode, then you go to Triforce, then Key Sanity, then the Entrance Randomizer, oh, and then God. you start combining them. <laughs> uh. I... I, I saw somebody struggle through a key sanity entrance randomizer and oh. ye gods. Oh, oh wow. no. Wow. That was like oh, a no. six and a half hour adventure. <laughs> oh Whoa. no. Speaking of six and a half hour adventures, <laughs> have you considered Ocarina of Time randomizer yet? I thought about it for my anniversary stream. It looks really cool. But then I already had kind of a full lineup so yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Uh... <laughs> Did you also hear and I'm not really sure how this one works. Wind Waker randomizer. What? Wait, really? Yeah. So apparently that's a thing that's being developed currently, if it's not already huh. out. And huh. that's one that Auth said he'd play with Sky. I, wow. I would watch this, but I'm, I've never my mind is also kind of blown either. at this. Yeah, I yeah. haven't either, so I probably oh, okay. wouldn't be a good candidate for playing it, but I'd certainly watch yeah. one or two. Hey, Ron Just see how it goes. Um, the hey, combo Ron, Link to the Past and Super Metroid combo, that is oh, one that um, is supposedly stable now. Is Before it? they had to vet seeds to make sure they were beatable. Okay. All but right. I hear that right. it's a stable thing and it's in public beta. Did they put casual mode into the Super Metroid portion of it yet? I'm not sure. Because I don't think I'd play it otherwise. Because I am not up I, on, I, the, on the I, tech for that. I think that it requires you to have some basic tech knowledge. Yeah. However, supposedly it's like, okay, learn how to do a shine spark and do some bomb jumps, and that's about the end of it. Yeah. And wall jumps, I guess. Okay. I'd definitely... Oh, wall jumps I could handle. Yeah. It's the bomb jumps and the short charges and the whatever else yeah. that I would have supposedly, to brush up significantly before I try. Uh, People made quick learn tutorials for that stuff so that people can oh, jump into yeah. doing it. I'm, so. I'm sure there's ways to do it. It's just unlike the LTTP rando, when I got into it, they already had the, the no glitches portion of it like really solid so i'm like yeah, yeah, yeah. i can pick mm -hmm. this up easy because i played this a bunch as a wee babby when i yeah, didn't exactly. know about anything <laughs> right. so yeah but yeah that, that combo i'd certainly look into doing that's probably a one and done on yeah as well mm -hmm. yeah that's fair that's fair i do enjoy watching the streams i just haven't had much opportunity lately because of obvious reasons right you know but randomizer streams are always super chill yeah i have to say though um you should give that ocarina of time like no oh glitches boy. required one. Yeah, yeah maybe just a like shot. a trial run or something like that. Yeah. Just so like to determine if you really like Plus, it or not. Plus, you can have flags for it. like um, determining which medallions you start with, et cetera, just to oh, make it shorter. Interesting. Yeah. And things like that. There's supposedly some good options. Yeah, I, I guess I'd, I'd probably watch a couple of them before I try it because with LTTV Rando, I saw it a ton of them before oh, I yeah, started yeah. doing it myself, so I kind of already picked up some of the, the stuff. You kind of get some of the routing and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. kind of like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I, I can pimp out Sky Bills for this one because mm -hmm. she saw it and she ran with it, and she's getting a ton of viewers from it now because she, she went from the get-go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And she loved uh, Ocarina of Time when she was growing up, but mm -hmm. did not like Link to the Past, interestingly. Huh. So oh, she jumped strokes. right into this one, and she's been making leaps and strides with everything going on so um yeah if you want to yeah. see something good she usually does one a night now wow, one really? a night Shit. yeah that is a significant portion of the night um some of them are a lot faster than others yeah. <laughs> and lately Random. she's been dabbling in key sanity too mm. which um that is not in amazing m faro's um original supposedly it's something that the community added 
Yeah, hmm. I think that plus the enemy randomizer was kind of add-ons. I didn't see the enemy randomizer yet, but... That's an interesting beast. <laughs> there's also a mode where supposedly you can turn off the trials and the medallion requirements and just go to Ganon. Oh, but you need oh. to find the right items to kill Ganon, obviously. Oh, you're talking yeah. about you're still talking about Ocarina. Yeah, I am. Oh, okay, sorry, sorry. Yeah, then enemy rando, I don't think that exists for Ocarina. Not yet at least. Yeah. But um it's been really fun to watch. I've learned a lot about the game about like things I didn't know were things, yeah. like the beans and all that. Yeah. I'll have to pick a Saturday or Sunday and try one and I see would, how it goes. I would tune in for a comfy OOT randomizer stream. Mm-hmm. Because I played yep. a lot of that as a wee babby as well. I had a strategy guide as a wee babby. Oh, but... yeah. <laughs> Same. Yep. Otherwise, that water temple would heck me wake yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. There's I that. mean, now that I know how to cheese it, but still. Plus, I think I would require a tracker of some sort because there's no Oh, there's way... a great tracker for there's it. There's no way in heck I'd be able to do it otherwise. Yeah, no, there's a fantastic tracker for Ocarina of Time randomizer. Yeah, what already. is it? I don't know what it's called, oh. but uh, Sky could definitely tell you. Yeah. yeah, I'll have to pick that up. It, I think there may only be one. So, k- kind of back to your point about the progression of LTTP randos that uh-huh. people do. Pretty much the only thing that's stopping me from doing a key sanity is a tracker that I need to make mods to. So, yeah, yeah. no, that the, uh, eh, I mean, you know, and and for that game, a like a tracker is probably not too difficult to put together. Oh no, yeah. no, it certainly isn't. I've got big plans on how to do a tracker for yeah. an extensible tracker for that. So nice. It'll take me a little bit to get to because oh, yeah. we have other tech time things to take care of, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So there is that, but that's the different rando variations are definitely on my radar for nice. future. The only reason I swapped out the the second normal rando is because four and a half hours at a stretch is a lot. Yeah, especially for a rando because yeah. sometimes I get a reasonable one. But then the second one makes up for it yeah. significantly. So it's like, well, shit. Yeah. Well, shit. It is now midnight, yep. and I am tired. And <laughs> I am still doing this. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, and besides that, Assault Android Cactus speedrun practice normal on Sundays. Uh, last week, said another couple PBs. Good. Not very good ones. Yeah. Like they're fi- PBs. 15 to 20 seconds at best. There's a lot of room. I, I left my next PBs wide open nice which is fine yeah which is fine I'm, I'm i'm pretty glad for that you're setting I, yourself up for success that's right i did <laughs> uh licorice and shiitake last weekend Never right on pp by too much like the my my, <laughs> my shiitake pb before that no no i'm not sorry not shiitake um peanuts peanut and shiitake now I'm questioning myself. That's what did I do? Starting to sound like Thai cuisine. What did yeah. I do? Which ones <laughs> did I do? Like we just ate. Uh. Well, Ronkley says that peanut, peanut and licorice. Good. Peanut and licorice. Excuse me. Shiitake I did the week odd before. Odd combination. Huh. Yeah. Don't. 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 <laughs> why, would, why would you combine that? That's, no. that's, that's silly. That's yeah, better it, than it, cactus. It was. Oh, well, supposedly that's edible. Yeah. Isn't um, it just like? Doesn't it just like taste like cucumber or something? I, I don't know. Le- Le- <laughs> uh, I have no idea. Yeah, it was like 15 to 20 second PBs, which without a patch would have been significant and cool and good and fun. With the patch, it's just like, uh, mm. uh. <laughs> But that was roller coaster. I think the, the licorice one, I was ahead by 40 seconds at one point. Lost it all. Oh. Went in the hole by like 10 seconds and then brought it back to 15 ahead. So it's like, uh, yeah, there's a pretty big amount I can save here. <laughs> yeah. I just got to not be the bad person and yep. and do the good things here. You so. got a you got a couple cents you can save. Oh, yeah. There's, there, there's a few seconds I can squeak out somewhere. Um, but there is that. So that's probably this weekend. I don't know what I'm going to do this weekend, actually. I just kind of made a quick scan the past like three or four Sessions have been a quick scan through all the characters because of patch. You know, do some faster things because patch is so much better now. And now I'm through them all, so meh. we'll see what happens. Fair enough. Uh, that is it for my game. God, it hurt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, you had the anniversary streams. So I did. Yeah, I had to do that. It and you have your late. your usual stuff. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I will say I'm glad I changed the schedule a little bit, though. That has helped. Good. Don't ever feel like you have to do it. No, I know. I know. It's just adding the the Schmup Book Club on Thursdays. It's like, well, now this takes my free nights from two to one. 
Yeah. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> yeah. Nice. And that's how it went. So whatever. There we go. All right. Toonski is part two. Yeah. We're getting back to Timaeus 222 with On Fire from Shantae and the Pirate's Curse. Then a remix from Sonic the Hedgehog entitled Super Sonic by 3Pop. And then I've got a remix from Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars titled Riptide Rush from Argyle. Yeah.
Oh, just barely made it before yeah. it started the bitch and ass uh, closure track there. Yeah. yeah we're not, I was not prepared for uh, how close. quickly that one ended. That was close. Yeah, I was kind of like, whoa, we're used to like long 15, 20 second fade outs. No, no, that one yeah, was yeah. done. It's like, dang it, techno, you're supposed to like have a trailing off yeah, period. That was done like dinner, done. The yeah. boots and cats need to run away. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right. Designs, ad hoc designs. Who wants to go first? I'm Me. really proud of mine. <laughs> Called oh. it. Womp womp. All right, go ahead. Yeah, you you do yours because you were you were prouder at the beginning of the show. <laughs> I mean, sure, you whatever. You were very proud of it. So, continuing on the trend of single name titles. Doom. Yeah, or single word titles, rather. Um, mine is <laughs> Escape. Okay. So, it's twin stick, but it's not the kind of twin stick you might think. So, this genre that I've chosen is wilderness survival but you can also throw in some horror things in here too it really depends like this is really extensible so it's a single player experience so you're familiar with like d or esther and games like that where you know you just kind of find things and no no no, i gotta run from something whatever and the walking the walking simulators as they're (laughs) yeah it's kind of like (laughs) derisively called except i want to make it interesting so everything that you do with your control scheme is moving Okay. So 
Firstly, let's talk about some other things. Uh, graphic style is realistic. Audio style is mostly environmental noises, honestly. Um, you might get some ambient music filling in gaps occasionally, but it's meant to make you hyper aware of what you are doing and where you are. Like, if you move around, you kick your foot or something like that, it's going to cause some stuff to rustle. You want to hear that because it influences the game. Okay. So your point of view is first person. I'm not going to dick around with camera stuff. It's literally okay. You are facing the direction that you see. That's the only cue you get. You get nothing else. You have to rely on audio and whatever you see, which in the right scenario, you could be blinded by light or you could just not see anything at all because it's too dark or whatever the case might be. So no creative use of bloom. It's literally just a, oh God, this is too bright for you to normally see. How many shades of brown will this include? Well, <laughs> it being environmental, shrug. Oh. So. <laughs> Quake five. Yeah. <laughs> brown <the> castles. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so the story here with this game is, uh, depending on what mode you choose, or perhaps it's randomized. I haven't really gotten along to that, but you're put into a scenario where you're left to gain your bearings a bit before disaster strikes. So you start in a scenario and you're like, okay, so this is what I'm doing, or this is where I'm at. This is what would normally be going on. And the game doesn't tell you when things change. You just kind of need to figure it out on your own. Like uh -huh. it got really quiet. What's coming. Etc. So there are things happening outside of earshot or outside of your visual yes. range that you're not told about. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you need to escape with only what you have on you and anything that you might find on your way. But taking the time to go find other things is not always good. Um, the story here, obviously, find safety and shelter before you, too, become a casualty. So the hook for this is... Some catastrophes are immediately evident. Like, you're staring at a wildfire. Get the fuck out. Hmm. Or something like that. Uh, while others only slightly clue you into the severity over time, perception, again, is the key. Um, though too much skittishness will inevitably lead to, or lead to false positives and potentially into even greater danger. Oh no, there's a bunch of splashing below. That's bad. Somebody's drowning or something like that. Now you jump down there and it's a fucking shark ripping something apart. Oh, look, yeah, you died. Womp womp. Or something like that. I mean, there's just all sorts of different examples that could be happening. So your inventory, though, is whatever you spawn with, with anything else you find while making your way to safety. There is an end goal, like getting out of the way of danger. You win the scenario then. So it could be long. It could be short. I haven't decided. Like... These could be like little miniature scenarios or they could be long drawn out stories for all I care. We could figure that out. Um, once you're done, you're done. You don't get to go back unless I was thinking about adding a mode where you could be like, okay, so I want to start over again. It's going to be the exact same, but I want to play it in a different way to see how it turns out. But you don't get to like pick up from a checkpoint or something like that. You go back to the beginning if you want to do it again. I see. So there's no <clears throat> in scenario checkpoints. You don't get to go back to a last save. It's if That's you right. if you fail, we'll say die. If you fail, uh -huh. you restart the scenario or you pick a different one. Yeah, I mean it's going to probably default to moving you to something else, but if you really want to go back and try it again, sure. Well, you could turn that off on a hard mode or something. I don't know. Um, but for training or whatever, that could be useful just to get used to how the game functions. Um, but yeah, the mechanics here, as I mentioned, dual stick movement is done entirely with analog sticks, moving both of them and clicking them. The left controls your left foot. The right controls your right. Oh boy. Is this tank controls? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, I, you know, I know of another uh, game that's kind of similar. It's where it's, it's not QWOP. Damn. Aww. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it needs to be intelligently designed, of course. But like the shoulder buttons would be things with like your hands or your arms or something like that. Mm, okay. The analog sticks are literally your movement. You don't just get to hold forward and be like, okay, we're good. No, you need to step over things, etc., and not trip. That it kind is of thing. tank controls. 
fucking tank you. controls. Yeah. Oh, dear. Yeah, it's going to be a thing. People so, will either love that or hate it. <laughs> <laughs> but then I was starting to think about, like, there's this really nifty touchpad on the PS4 controller. Or you could be like swipe across to like clear brush out of your way and things like that. Uh-huh. So there could be things like that. Or if you want to rub vigorously, it could be like trying to get sticks to light on fire. Uh-huh. That oh. kind of thing. So, um, but really the objective, as I mentioned before, is to survive or escape. And we could turn this into a whole bunch of different things like natural scenarios. It could be zombie apocalypse. It could be really anything. I got to say, when you said twin stick, Earlier you got night. really excited. I was really excited. <laughs> this took a turn. It sure did. Yeah. I just wanted to see your face droop a little. Oh, dang it. Well, it's not that I'm not excited about it. I think it's a good idea. I just, I was expecting cactus. <laughs> <laughs> cactus is not the only twin stick shooter. No, it isn't, but it's a damn good one. Yeah, it is. It is. So you're not wrong, but maybe... Maybe sometime soon I'll make an arcade style game for you. I didn't have to sit down to listen to that one. I could have stayed standing yep. in bed fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's fair. But uh, yeah, that's that's the game idea. That's good. Real good. So yeah. fight for it for number two. Yeah, I'll grab this one. Oh, okay. You'll need to sit the fuck down for this one. <laughs> and, uh, oh. <laughs> because it's going to be heavy. Go on. Probably not. Uh, so I am calling this a rhythm maze ah, slash. It. Oh Jesus! No, wait a minute. Let hey, me sit down again. No. Why don't you take a look at the last few and tell me like how long it's been since I've made a rhythm uh, game? Damn it! Come on. So meme, meme strat. <laughs> so this is a rhythm maze slash grid puzzler. So it has lasers. I like lasers. I like lasers. It has uh, colored lasers. Ooh, uh, color. They're emitted from different spots on a grid-based map. Um, so they're directional. Uh, there are mirrors to redirect lasers. Uh, it you know like solid blocks to block them, that kind of thing. So it's kind of a line line of sight <laughs> puzzle game. Um, but there is a, a rhythm component that we're going to get into. Uh, connecting the lasers to similarly colored receptacles, so they will receive the laser light. Um, will start playing an associated electronic music instrument to the beat. So, you know, like a red one might be, you know, like the bass or the rhythm or something like that. And like a bright blue one might be kind of like a, you know, a very shimmery rhythm uh, or melody or something. Um, some receptacles can accept multiple different colored lasers. So um, they're not just all like, oh, hey, I have a red laser. It's going to be red all the time. It's like, some some emitters might emit like a white laser that can be split into a whole bunch of different colors and stuff like that. Are we getting into some cyan, magenta, and yellow bullshit over here? Yeah. Potentially, yes. All right. It will Excellent. get into that. Subtractive so. color. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, it's additive because it's light. Anyway. Well, yeah, but cyan, magenta, and yellow are subtractive. Are they? Yeah. Those are, are sure? for print. Yeah, but. Cyan is the primary subtractive color of whatever. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> CYMK, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Um, anyway, uh, so there are uh, different ways that you can essentially, like, make the beams interact. You you have splitters that will essentially, like, take a beam and split it into two or three or however many ways it's specified mm-hmm. to do so, um, and it'll retain its color. Uh, you have color filters, which will filter out certain colors from a beam. Gels. So if you have like a purple beam and you have like a red filter, like it'll actually filter out the red and you'll have a blue beam and when it comes out the other side. Um, and you can join beams together in this way too. So like if you manage to reflect two beams into like the same kind of line of sight, you know, like a red and a blue, you'll end up with a purple beam. Um, there will be uh, delay lines, which will accept a beam and buffer it for a certain number of beats. So let's say like you have... You can feed a beam into something that'll delay like its output by two beats or whatever. So like light will hit it, and then like two beats later, whatever light went in will go out, and just basically whatever signal you feed it will be delayed by that amount. Um, there will be uh, gates which can be controlled to turn on and off um, anything passing through it for a certain number of beats. So let's say like you have you have a gate that will be on for two beats and then off for two beats, that kind of thing. And that will also control, like, you know, um, it's kind of like traffic control for all of these different beams of light and stuff like that. 
Um, so what does all this get us besides just kind of a playground for music? Well, here comes the objective. Uh, there's a playlist at the top of the screen, um, and that determines which instruments need to play and when. And the color timeline uh, at the top will determine which instruments need to play for which beats, and the marker resets whenever there's a mismatch. So it's all, the marker's always going from left to right, and there's kind of like a timeline at the top um, where the x-axis is like time, and you know there's a bunch of like different uh, colors there that'll say like, hey, for this measure, you know, we want to have like this light going into, into the receptacle and so on. And essentially that's, that's how you can form like different sections of, uh, you know, of that part of the song. Um, and the goal for a stage is to align the lasers through the maze, setting up delays and gates such that it will reflect the color timeline at the top uh, to form a section of the music. So uh, basically you are configuring all of these delay lines and gates to create that part of the sound, uh, the song that is being desired by whatever's indicated at the top. Um, and the levels will all consist of related instruments in a composition. So essentially like, you know, throughout, let's say level one, stage one, like all the stuff in level one is going to kind of form, uh, you know, <laughs> the same kind of song. Um, but the stages will be like, you know, different parts of it and stuff like that. Um, and advancing levels gets you a different set of instruments and beats, you know, changes in tempo. It might like increase in tempo, maybe change in, in time signature, that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. And if I felt like succumbing to capitalism, of course you can have DLC in the form of additional levels and, and songs and shit like that. So, so when you were first describing this, I had in my mind that these lasers or whatever were continuous, but it almost sounds like they're pulsed. They are continuous from their sources, but okay. they can be made pulsed by using the gates ah. or delay lines or okay. a combination of the two. So essentially, like, they're continuous, but you have, like, control over, like, you know, um, let's say that you have a gate, and, and these gates are configurable. Like, you can say, I want you to be on for one beat and be off for the other three in this measure or whatever. Okay. So, you know, like, you have control over them and you can place them. There's a limited number of resources that you have that you're provided at the beginning, um, but you can arrange them in the maze however you would like. And there are, of course, some stationary objects, too, like oh, hey, there's a gate here that's, like, stuck on this particular setting, mm -hmm. and you have to just work with it. Okay. All right, so all of that, maybe minus the rhythm component, there was a... Uh, I forget when. It was, it was a game, probably, I want to say, early 90s, on a lot of shareware CDs, called Laser Light, which was all about reflecting and splitting mm -hmm. and combining and all of that, that sounds a lot like this just minus the rhythm component really right so if you're looking for you know a point of reference or whatever i'd probably yep. suggest looking at that i think i remember playing it i remember not being very good at it <laughs> as a wee babby yep because I... mind could not process reflecting lights mm -hmm. apparently yeah i have heard of it i've never played it myself but i'm familiar with it um and i think that this idea is very similar to that but it builds on that by kind of creating like an additional layer of complexity with right. the playlist at the top yeah yeah certainly the rhythm <clears throat> the rhythm and audio component is certainly a a, a large add on to it yeah okay so with the with the gates and the delays kind of transforming it into more of a a pulse type situation let me go back to this as i can think of it mm -hmm. uh, is there a way to con con Bind it back into a, a continuous stream after that point is that one of the more advanced puzzles to kind of take this in multiple steps like yeah beam pulse beam pulse et cetera, yeah et cetera? and you know like there will <clears throat> there would also be combiners where like if you shoot two lasers into it you know it'll have like a you know just kind of a spot where the light will come out of that will combine the two so like you can combine them you can split them you can you know gate them and stuff like that mm -hmm. so let's say like you know, there's a particular puzzle where the only laser that you have available is white, but you have receptacles that are like, you know, uh, red, green, and blue. And in addition to that, they correspond to different uh, instruments, you know, up in the playlist. So it's really up to you to determine, okay, I need to split the signal here. I need to add gates here. And this these will all create the arrangement of instruments that are, you know, um, like the goal at the at the top. Yeah. Hmm. 
Got no other critiques, no other, <laughs> no other questions. That's all no I got other for you. Nitpicks. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, I would ask people to sit down, but this is not uh, my typical fare of twin stick shooters. Or yeah, right, exactly. Right, you, can, yeah. You, can, you can you can sit, you can stand up if you'd like. Uh, okay. That's, yeah. That's, that's fine. That'll but make I, using this very awkward. Yeah, it sure will, <laughs> especially given the the length of the headphone cord yeah, for right. you as well. Um, but I've I've gone the route of uh of an adventurish game. An adventure game. I know, right? Oh my god. Yeah, it's new grounds for me, certainly. Hit me with it. Mm. All right, so we've got I've got even got a title for this one. Whoa. Indifference Engine. A chill exploration slash adventure game where the goal mm. is to escape an alien ship. However you do it, doesn't matter as long as you get the fuck out of there. Hmm. It starts with you being ab- abducted at the very start by aliens, nondescript aliens, whoever, whether it's yeah. greys or you know, whatever. We're not picky. Who knows? It doesn't matter. As long as you're abducted in some <laughs> yeah. sense, it doesn't matter. All right. Uh, and your goal is to escape. However, they get very bored with you very quickly, so they don't give a shit about you, hence the indifference. So what what does escape consist of? Like, Can I just be jettisoned out the cargo hold? Is that, is that a win condition? Ah, we'll, we'll get to that. Oh. <laughs> so for, for first, some kind of operational uh, parameters here. Pseudo 3D side-scrolling isometric-ish like uh, the old Sierra and LucasArts adventure games. Oh, right on. Kind of like Crusader, No Regret, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, kind of like Monkey Island sort of okay, thing. Okay, you know? yeah. Maybe not necessarily point and click, but kind of that same kind of you're you're looking at a scene and you can navigate. Through okay. It. And there's some depth to it, but not like, not like full yeah. 3D or anything like that. The primary mechanic behind this is the indifference meter. This is how the aliens perceive you. You start dead center, where they neither care for nor are pissed at you. Hmm. You can affect this in either direction by performing certain actions. So, if you do something to piss them off, suddenly they are more angry at you. (laughs) If you do something that makes them super bored, suddenly they are less angry and or less interested in you. If you do something unique and clever, suddenly they're more interested in you. Different action, different... So, okay, so I just covered that. The easiest and quickest path through the entire game is staying near the center of the meter. So being absolutely unremarkable <laughs> is the fastest, most speed runniest way through this game. Yeah. <laughs> Objective be boring. Exactly, exactly. The only game over conditions, as you were alluding to before, is at the very extremes of the meter. Either you get so interesting that they want to pay attention to you, or you piss them off so much that they... <laughs> <laughs> they either just by you. jettisoning you jettisoning you uh, jettisoning there we go you into space putting you under the knife for surgical study etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah but Other does more gruesome does outcomes. the jettison still count as a win condition it does not you <laughs> ideally want to be alive okay yeah. there's there's I suppose i should have there's specified the kicker at the beginning you want to escape alive you can walk around the alien ship largely uninhibited, provided you stay out of the way. No going into restricted areas, no walking into laser fences, no messing with their head pilot. Don't do any of that if you want to stay in one piece. Don't annoy them, don't break or steal stuff while they're looking at you. They're just going to let you have like free reign of the place. Yeah. Not, After they captured you? They don't really care much about you. You're a boring-ass <laughs> human or whatever you happen to be. <laughs> okay. eh, as long as it's not hurting anything, just let them be. You're, let them be. You're a house pet. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. just like, yeah, I mean, we thought it was a good idea at the time, but it's, it's not really doing anything, so just... We're just going to stop feeding it. Yeah, just, just let it... It'll, it'll work itself out. Yeah. So just don't worry about it. This is largely puzzle and dialogue-based. So there are three different options that you have for most of these solutions. The aggressive option, use of force, coercion, or threats. The neutral option, use of items that you pick up along the way, stealth, in movement. Cleverness, is by avoiding the puzzles or dialogue altogether. If you really don't want to do anything, you can find a way to not do anything. (laughs) Or the passive option, the use of diplomacy, talking to the aliens, compromise, pleading, or bribery. For example, I'll throw this one out there because this is about as far as I got with it and before I wanted to stop and not give the entire thing away. The first quote-unquote puzzle is escaping your cell block. There's multiple ways to do this. The force field really doesn't stop you from escaping. You might think so because it's a force field. Of course it'll stop things. No, you can just walk through it if you choose to do it. Oh. You have to do it, though. 
you can't just kind of sit there and be like, oh, well, I don't want to hurt myself or whatever. You got to just walk right on through. And then, when you get to the door of the cell block, you can use the intercom, kind of impersonate a guard or something, get them to let you out. Or you can just pull on the door. Apparently, they didn't latch it very well. <laughs> They are that indifferent. Yeah, they are just like, yeah, we just put we we stuck this thing down there. It's probably fine. It's, it's totally yeah, fine. They're, they're, it all works on the honor system. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it escapes. Well, what's it gonna do? It's a puny human or whatever the fuck it is. So who cares, right? But yeah, that's about it. So your entire journey is to escape this ship. You can do it in you know many different ways. Just don't get killed. Hmm. Be boring if you want to be quick about it. <laughs> That's what I got. Neat. I ah. dig. I like point and click like yeah. things. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a, a randomization element to this where like, you know, certain actions might be offensive to like a whole bunch of, you know, of the aliens in one game. Um, but you know, like totally just, you know, part of their tradition or whatever in another, like, you know, is is there an element of uh, every single game trying to figure out what their deal is? Uh, maybe not to that extent, but maybe more based on what's on screen at the time and what is paying attention to you at the time. Ah. So yeah, you can be violent and aggressive, but if nobody's around to see it, it really doesn't count for or against you. Like you can, to get through, say, a secure door or something, you can find some weapon and shoot the shit out of it. Mm. But if there's not a security camera or another alien around to see it, that won't be counted as aggressive because they don't know about it. Fair. <laughs> but if they are around, oh boy, they're going to care. <laughs> All right. So maybe not like in the true procedural sense where, yeah, the AI is going to be different psychologically or have different motivations to mm -hmm. it, but it'll be different based on, you know, say how 10 minutes from start, there's going to be three aliens here versus five minutes from start, there will be one or zero or yeah. something like that. It kind of reminds me of the type of um, like randomization there is in uh, Impossible Mission mm -hmm. uh, for the Commodore 64, where it's basically like the rooms are somewhat predetermined. They might not be in the same order every time, but the behavior of all of the robots in each room is randomized. And for some rooms, it can make it an absolute nightmare. And for others, you know, it could turn that nightmare into something absolutely trivial. Yeah, certainly I wouldn't want to take it to the extent where, yeah, this dude looks the same but he acts different this yeah. this time around versus the last time around well there's no real way to figure that out yeah so i'd, I'd much rather make it more action based like yeah they're kind of generally against me shooting the shit out of something yeah but if they're not around well that's kind of more intuitive <laughs> if a tree saying, falls in the forest yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. exactly like yeah. oh yeah i mean this thing escaped somehow while we were watching it but when we're not watching it, somehow got outside the cell. Well, maybe somebody forgot to lock the door. Oh, who yeah. knows? Who knows at that point? Right? They had to bring it out. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, so, so it's Fred's turn to lock the door. Oh, no. It was Sally's turn to lock the door. Oh, no. Well, geez, it escaped. Oh, no. Oh, no. Eh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> eh. <laughs> Indifference. Indeed. We'll, we'll save you the most time. Cool. All right. Any other right final on. closing thoughts before we wrap up for tonight? I think we are good. Yeah, I think All I've right. got everything out. Very good. Well, we'll leave you with our typical closing track, then a remix from Mario Kart Wii entitled Wind in Your Hair by Overclocked University. Have a good night, everybody. Ciao. Adios.
Thank you.